This is Atomic Shinobi and today I am going to narrate second part of What if Narut became higher of a Duke Wolf. If you enjoyed this video please like share and subscribe to the channel. Now wasting no more time, let's start the story. Four days have passed since Team 7 had arrived to take of Chakra Mutants attacking it, only to learn they were really failed experiments made by Orochimaru. Having learned this from Fu, Ataki Kunoichi that had been hired along with her teammates to deal with the experiments. With Fu being the only survivor after they hunted down the experiments, the Greenette escaping while her teammates were killed. After learning all this, Kakashi had sent Pakun back to Konoha to request backup before he and Yamato went to set up defenses around the town. While Naruto, Satsuki, and Hinata got to know Fu, who'd accidentally revealed Naruto's Jinchuriki status to both girls, and while shocked at this, it didn't change how they saw the Uzumaki either leading to them becoming Fu's friends at her request upon seeing that they didn't care about Naruto being a Jinchuriki, while making her happy to finally have friends outside of Shibuki. Resulting in the four genin training together while they waited for their backup to arrive, with Naruto having also taught Fu the Shadow Clone Jutsu. Something that excited the Nanabi Jinchuriki after learning how useful it could be during training, and touched that Naruto would teach her it. The four of them had also taught each other some ninjutsu with Naruto, Satsuki, and Hinata teaching Fu the water style and wind style ninjutsu they knew. While Fu taught them the water style ninjutsu she knew, as well as teaching Naruto and Hinata some exercises to strengthen their water style ninjutsu as well. They also learned that Fu was pretty skilled in kenjutsu as well, when she showed them the takigakure style. Water cutting sword, while understanding that it's one jutsu she couldn't teach them. But it did give Naruto and Satsuki the chance to spar against her, using their swords with Hinata also sparring against them while using their swords, wanting to get better at fighting opponents that use weapons. Outside of the training, the genin also spent time together while getting to know each other better, something that made Fu happier than she'd been in a long time. Which the Konoha genin noticed, making them happy as well that they were able to help Fu and befriend the Taki Kunoichi. Currently, Team 7 and Fu were at the entrance of town, waiting for their backup to arrive, knowing they should be arriving today. So, who did the Hokage send anyway? Satsuki asked while looking at Kakashi and Yamato, wondering who their backup will be. The message didn't give any specific names, just that it'll be a three-dot man team which will have a medic. Ninja, someone to help gather information and interrogate one of the experiments if we capture one of them alive, and someone to help fight them. Replied Kakashi, knowing that names weren't usually included in messages, in case they were ever intercepted. Will that be enough? just three more people questioned hanada not sure if three people will make much of a difference especially if only one would be helping them actually fight the experiments it will be along with being safer since a larger team would draw more attention as well as potentially cause the experiments to attack all at once or flee if they don't want to face superior numbers yamato said the genin nodding and understanding since they couldn't risk the experiments attacking all at once or running away and scattering after another hour the ninja could see their backup approaching before they soon jumped down in front of the town entrance. With Naruto, Satsuki, and Hinata recognizing one of the members of the team as Yugo Azuki. Yugo is a young woman with fair skin, straight, purple hair reaching down to her waist and tied in a ponytail, and warm brown eyes, along with having a red flame. Like tattoo on her right shoulder. With her attire consisting of a black halter top that left her midsection exposed, a green flak jacket, form fitting black pants, black elbow, length gloves with metal arm guards, black ninja sandals and a sword strapped to her back. The genin having met Yugo, after Kakashi and Yamato brought her during training sessions to help Naruto and Satsuki with their kenjutsu. Though she didn't show up all the time due to her being busy, unaware that she was fulfilling her anbu duties. With her fiancé, Hayate Gekko, filling in as their kenjutsu instructor when she was unavailable. As for the other two, the first is a large, imposing man with tanned skin, black eyes, and two scars on his face with one going diagonally down his right cheek and jaw, and the second going down the left side of his face near his eye and through his mouth to his chin. With him wearing a dark gray, nearly black, uniform consisting of a buttoned shirt with a folded collar, matching colored pants, and dark gray ninja sandals, a black trench coat over it, and a bandana version of the forehead protector wrapped around his head. And the second was a 19, Year. Old teen boy with pale skin, onyx, colored eyes covered by circular, black, rimmed glasses, and ash, gray hair kept in a ponytail and bangs that parted at the center. 
His attire consisted of a dark purple shirt with a high collar, a white under shirt, dark purple pants with a white cloth waistband, blue ninja sandals, dark purple fingerless gloves with armored plates on the back of the hand, and a blue forehead protector. Ibiki, I'm surprised the Hokage sent you. Kakashi said in surprise that the Hokage chose to send Ibiki to get information out of the experiments. Given the circumstances, Hokage. Sama wanted to ensure we got all the information we could get out of these experiments. Replied Ibiki, with the two Jonin nodding at this. Knowing if anyone can make any experiments they capture reveal their secrets, it'd be Ibiki. Well, it's good to see you here, you as well Yugo. And I take it this is the medic. Ninja. Yamato said as he and Kakashi shook their colleagues' hands before turning to who they guessed was the medic. Ninja, who smiled and bowed lightly to them. I am indeed. Genin Kabuto Yakushi, I'm looking forward to helping in any way I can. Introduced Kabuto, getting surprised looks from Team 7 and Fu that he's just a Genin. A Genin? Wasn't there anyone else? Kakashi asked, wondering why the Sandame would send a Genin when there could have been more experienced medic. Nin available. It may seem strange, and while Kabuto's had a less than stellar track record when it comes to the Chunin exams, he's also proven to be one of our best medics. Being the adopted son of the late, former captain of the medic corps and his part, time work at the hospital. It's why the Hokage assigned him to this mission, since he isn't expecting him to take part in any field work as a medic. Ninja, and if he does a good enough job then he can qualify for a field promotion. Ibiki explained, knowing for any genin that don't have any luck in the chunin exams, they would find better luck in advancing through the ranks with field promotions. Indeed, while I may not be much of a fighter, I still do what I can and hope to be able to advance to Chunin with what I do here," said Kabuto while scratching his cheek sheepishly at his past failures in the Chunin exams. With Kakashi nodding and understanding at this, knowing that rank doesn't mean anything, it's how skilled and talented a person is. If the Hokage chose Kabuto as the medic, Nin, then it means he must be very talented. Either way, it's good to have you here Kabuto, with what we're up against we'll likely need a skilled medic. These are our genin, Naruto Uzumaki, Satsuki Uchiha and Hinata Hayuga, with this being Fu from Takigakure, said Yamato, with Kabuto nodding before turning to his fellow genin. Hello, it's nice meeting you four, said Kabuto while shaking their hands, though Fu merely nodded and regarded the backup team warily. As while she's begun opening up more with Naruto, Satsuki and Hinata, she's still wary and distrustful of other people she didn't know. It's nice meeting you as well, Kabuto. Are you really that talented of a medic? Ninja for the Hokage to send you? Questioned Hinata, given with her desire to learn medical ninjutsu, it'd be good to see if Kabuto would be willing to help her when he isn't busy. I don't mean to brag or anything, but I like to believe I'm one of the best medic. Nin in Konoha, learning all I can and improving my knowledge, along with making sure I have perfect chakra control. And I'm hoping to prove myself on this mission. Kabuto replied, though having completely different thoughts to what he was saying. Having been contacted by Orochimaru to make sure he was the medic. Nin on the backup team to ensure Konoha doesn't learn anything they shouldn't about the curse marks. With it being easy enough to make sure his file was among those the Hokage wanted, to see who'd be the best qualified for the mission. Along with a convincing performance of being eager to prove himself in the field in the hopes for a field promotion, getting him a spot on the team. And the chance to study these failed experiments was also too good to pass up. To see what changes could have occurred since they were left here. Thought Kabuto while pushing his glasses up, intrigued to study the experiment's bodies and the information he can gather from them. In fact, if you're interested, when you all aren't out in the field and I'm not busy with my duties as a medic, I could even teach you some advanced chakra control exercises I know, as well as some medical ninjutsu. Kabuto offered, surprising the genin at the offer. You'd help teach us medical ninjutsu and improve our chakra control? Why? Satsuki asked with a raised brow, figuring he'd be more focused on his own duties and training. Well as your senpei, I feel it's my responsibility to help train new genin to be better prepared for when they go out into the field, along with the other trials and tribulations that come with being a ninja. And if there's one thing I've learned, it's that while it's important to always have a medic. Nin in your team, it's even better if the entire team could heal themselves than rely on a single person. Replied Kabuto, something the genin could understand as it made sense. That'd be really great Kabuto, I'm actually learning medical ninjutsu and having someone teaching me would be even better. 
Hinata said with a smile as Satsuki nodded in agreement. It would be good to be able to heal our own injuries if we end up alone and are low on supplies. Said Satsuki, knowing that way they'd be able to heal themselves and conserve supplies like medical equipment. I'll, think about it, since I doubt that I'll be able to get my chakra control high enough to learn medical ninjutsu. Said Naruto, hesitant at accepting help from someone he didn't know or trust. Are you sure? I'd be happy to help, and if medical ninjutsu doesn't work. I also have knowledge on a wide range of herbs that can be made into medicines and poisons that'd be useful on missions. Kabuto said, with Naruto simply nodding. I'll think about it. Naruto repeated before looking away. Don't mind Naruto, he's just become rather introverted with those from Konoha. Said Satsuki, knowing that Naruto wouldn't trust someone instantly, especially if they're from Konoha as well. Yeah. Naruto.kun also has trust issues among his peers especially with those he doesn't know and it'd take a while before you can earn his trust. It's nothing personal. Hanada added, with Kabuto waving it off in understanding, but also taking note of this change. Hmm, it seems it's not just his physical appearance that's changed, it's also his personality. And from what I'm sensing, Naruto also seems to have grown stronger as well, compared to what his academy record says. I'll have to make sure to keep a close eye on these genin especially Naruto and Satsuki with their progress. Hanada and Fu are a bonus as well, an inbranded Hyuga that's been cast out of the clan and branching out in her techniques, as well as the Nanabi Jinchuriki. Thought Kabuto, knowing these genin will warrant his attention and see how they progress. Especially since the Greenet is also a target of his other master in the organization he's a part of, knowing it could prove beneficial if he has a chance to bring her to them. Kabuto then turned his attention to Kakashi and Yamato as they began filling the backup team in on everything that's happened. While Yugo went over and smiled at the genin, which Naruto, Satsuki and Hinata returned. It's good to see you three again, Yugo said, glad to see your part, time students and that they're alright despite how dangerous this mission looks to be. You too Yugo. Sensei, we've also been keeping up with the training you've given us, along with Hayate. Sensei replied Naruto, with Satsuki nodding in agreement. I'm also getting better at dual wielding my swords as well, especially with the sparring matches we've been having against Fu. Satsuki added, getting Yugo's attention as she turned to the greenette. You know Kenjutsu? I'm guessing that means you know how to use the water-cutting sword. Said Yugo, surprising Fu that she knew about that technique. You know about it? Questioned Fu, with the purplet nodding in response. I've heard about it, since Kenjutsu's always been an interest of mine, I learn about all the different styles and types of swords used in it. The Takigakure style, water cutting sword is certainly the most unique I've heard of, and I'd be interested in seeing you use it Fu. If you want, while we're here and aren't busy, I could even give you some pointers, since I also help Naruto and Satsuki with their Kenjutsu training. Yugo said, surprising Fu again at the offer before she looked to the other genin, wanting to see what they thought of her. With the trio nodding, having gotten to know Yugo during their training sessions, along with what they hears from Hayate about her, they all trusted the purplet. Making Fu turn back to Yugo and nod slowly, accepting her offer, willing to give her a chance but would remain guarded. That about covers everything. Kabuto, when you're ready to examine the bodies, we've got them stored away in the clinic. Kakashi said, with the medic. Nin nodding in response. I'll head there now and get started. I'll bring a report once I find out everything I can," replied Kabuto before heading towards the clinic to begin his examination. While he's doing that, you both come with me to help set up a workshop I can use," Ibiki said, Kakashi and Yamato nodding, knowing his workshop will need to be secured and prepared for interrogation and, potentially, torture. You go, you and the genin head out to start scouting the area and see about setting up some traps as well. Kakashi. Senpei and I will join you once we're done helping Ibiki," said Yamato as the trio left to find somewhere to set up a workshop. All right, then let's head out and start scouting the area and putting up some traps," Yugo said to the genin, who nodded in response before they headed out of the village to get started. Unknown Location Meanwhile, unknown to the ninja, the leader of the failed experiments, Ryujin, has just learned of the death of three of his subordinates. Ryujin was a young man with pale skin long black hair that went down to his waist and kept tied up in a ponytail, pointed ears, black claws, red eyes, and a red scar that ran diagonally across his nose, left eye, and right cheek. 
with his attire consisting of a red kimono held closed by a teal sash, black robes over the kimono, and a large white fur around his neck and wrapped around his right arm. With Ryujin currently sitting on a throne made out of bones, being mostly made out of skulls, looking down at three of his fellow failed second stage curse mark experiments that were kneeling before him. The first being a muscular bipedal horse with brown skin, a mane of black hair, a matching colored tail, solid yellow eyes, and a horn sprouting from their forehead. With them only wearing a battle skirt made of white and black fur, a necklace made of large red beads, gold bands around their forearms, and blue and gold bracers, with them also wielding a large battle axe. The second was an equally muscular bipedal bull with black skin, horns sprouting from the top of their head, and solid blue eyes, with them wearing a similar battle skirt with the addition of a blue loincloth, a necklace made of large blue beads, blue and hold bracers, and a gold ring through their nose, along with carrying a large hammer. And the final experiment was a bipedal wolf creature, with dark gray fur covering its body, lighter gray fur around its muzzle and chest, solid dark yellow eyes, razor sharp claws, and fangs sprouting from the corners of its mouth, with their only clothing being torn dark blue pants, and gray cuffs around their wrists. So, Blitz, Tank and Jester are dead. Killed by Konoha Ninja. Ryujin said, not liking to hear more ninja have arrived, even less that they killed three of his fellow failed experiments. Yes, Ryujin. Sama. We found the site of the battle and got a look at the village, finding it's now surrounded by a wall with the ninja residing inside. We also heard that they would be expecting backup to arrive as well said the horse, making Ryujin close eyes his eyes letting out a sigh of annoyance, before opening his eyes again. Mezuki, Gazuki, Lycan. Find these ninja and deal with all of them, along with that tacky ninja that managed to escape. Kill them and bring me their heads, so they can be added to my collection. Said Ryujin, refusing to have these ninja continue interfering in their business. Yes, Ryujin. Sama, said the three experiments before they stood up and took off to leave their base to track down the ninja and deal with them. Later, with Kabuto. Kabuto looked over the bodies of Blitz, Tank and Jester, having looked at samples of their blood, bones, and organs to see what he could find, along with where their curse marks were located as well, before he began examining them to see what changes there were. Once that was done he began filling out his reports to be delivered. The animal curse seals seems to have improved since the prototype stages, there doesn't seem to be any cell destruction or any deterioration in their bodies. And despite being dead, they've yet to revert back to their human forms. Kabuto thought while writing down his notes as he glanced at the bodies. Unlike the curse seals on the Sound 4 and Kimimaro, the animal curse seal was the predecessor, instead giving instructions on how to make a potion that had transformed the user. Unfortunately, the potion was incomplete, as any test subjects died not long after since their bodies couldn't handle the power boost and those that did survive might as well have died since they lose all their power, shrivel up, and can barely move on their own. With this being the completed version that Orochimaru had created and acted like the current curse seal, where he'd bite them and see if they survived. Though the Sanin had lost interest in the project after discovering Jugo and his unique abilities to create an even stronger curse seals. Though judging from the battle they had with Kakashi and Yamato, perhaps these experiments have found a way to draw out more power from their curse seals perhaps even a way for them to permanently remain in their second stage forms, even after death. But would they be able to transform back to their human forms or did they end up stuck in their transformed states? Thought Kabuto as he continued writing. Though if I recall correctly, Tuyuya has shown the ability to draw out more of her curse seal's power when she has strong feelings of hatred and rage, enough to where she could beat Sakan and Yukon. Could it be their hatred and anger allowed them to draw out more power? or is it an ability unique to only Tuyuya? Or perhaps they had begun to transform even further past the second stage, allowing them to evolve and adapt, while gaining more power and new abilities. Is it possible that this version of the curse seal doesn't have a limit to how much power the user can gain, allowing them to continuously grow stronger? Could that be the case with Ryujin, for him to be the leader and have the most power? Did he grow even stronger? Kabuto thought with a frown. Finishing his report before he went over and sabotaged the bodies, making it seem like the cells began deteriorating, breaking them down until there would soon be nothing useful left. Once that was done, he began writing his official report to deliver to Ibiki, while sending a shadow clone to meet up with Kimimaro and deliver the real report to Orochimaru. Finding the Kagaya outside the village, 
far enough away to where he wouldn't be sensed by the Konoha ninja, but close enough to keep an eye on them. Kabuto, what did you find out? Kimimaro asked while looking at the clone, who handed him the report. Here's the data I've collected for Orochimaru. Sama, replied the clone, with Kimimaro nodding as he looked the report over, frowning at the more he read. You think the experiments could have become even stronger, stated Kimimaro, with the clone nodding in response as the Kagaya sealed the report away to be delivered to Orochimaru. It's a possibility, given that just three of them were able to give Kakashi and Yamato trouble for a while, along with displaying unexpected abilities like spitting acid and casting a genjutsu to make anyone laugh uncontrollably. And the fact Ryujin is able to make all of them obey and listen to him, means he's potentially grown even stronger than he was before. The clone said, which only made Kimimaro's frown deepen. Given how last time they saw Ryujin, he was second only to Jugo in terms of power, especially since his curse seal was unique as it was one of the newer curse seals with elements of the animal ones added to it. If he's grown even stronger then he could prove to be a serious problem. You believe we should assist the Konoha ninja in dealing with Ryujin, should he prove too much for them? Said Kimimaro, with the clone nodding at his words. Yes. If Ryujin does prove too powerful and kills them, then he'd be left to his own devices with no one to get in his way. Which could prove disastrous for us if he plans to target Orochimaru. Sama. The clone said, making the Kagaya narrow his eyes in anger at the thought of anyone daring to target his master, savior. Very well, we will assist the Konoha ninja if Ryujin proves too much for them to handle and ensure he does not become a threat to Orochimaru. Sama. Kimimaru stated, with the clone nodding in agreement before dispelling as the Kagaya pulled out a summoning scroll and a vial of blood. In a puff of smoke, a snake summon appeared, who Kimimaro handed the storage scroll to, which it proceeded to swallow, before dispelling to deliver the report to Orochimaru. With Team 7, Fu, and Yugo. Meanwhile, Yugo and the Genin had set up several traps around the town, being able to cover more ground with the help from Naruto's and Fu's shadow clones. With them soon being joined by Kakashi and Yamato, after they'd finished helping Ibiki set up his workshop. Once they finished setting up several traps, the Genin and three Janin began scouting the surrounding forest, looking for any sign for where the experiments could be. Going to where Kakashi and Yamato fought the three experiments to see if they could pick up a trail for where they came from. With them all jumping through the trees, only for them to be forced to stop by a sudden powerful blast of wind. The wind forcing them to channel chakra to their feet to stick to the branches to avoid getting blown away. Though they didn't have time to react as the wind turned razor sharp, slicing right through the trees they were standing on. Making them all lose their footing as they were sent flying through the air, with Kakashi, Yamato and Yugo managing to grab hold of some trees that weren't destroyed. While Naruto, Satsuki, Hanada, and Fu weren't as lucky as they went flying into the forest making the Janin mentally curse as the wind soon stopped. But before they could go after the Genin, they were forced to jump back by a large blast of flames shooting from the ground. The three tensing with Kakashi and Yamato pulling out a kunai while Yugo drew her sword when Gazuki and Mizuki jumped down on either side of them. Not a moment later, Gazuki slammed his hammer into the ground, causing the ground to start shaking before stone spikes shot out of the ground towards the ninja. With them quickly jumping into the air to avoid the spikes before Yugo raised her sword blocking Mizuki's axe after he jumped up after them. Wind style. Air bullets. Mizuki shouted, shooting multiple air bullets right at Yugo, with the purplette having no time to dodge the point. Blank attack as she was sent flying back and flying into a tree grunting at the impact. Earth style. Flying thrown stones. Said Gazuki before slamming his hammer into the ground again, sending dozens of rocks flying right at Yugo. Lightning style. Electromagnetic murder. Kakashi said, going through hand signs before releasing a stream of lightning that blasted through the rocks towards Gazuki. Water style. Water trumpet, said Yamato, shooting a jet of water through his hands at the bull experiment, combining with the lightning empowering both attacks, only for Mizuki to jump down in front of Gazuki. Wind style. Wind cutter jutsu, said Mizuki while swinging his axe and unleashing several blades of wind slashing through and dispersing the stream of water, along with dispelling the lightning. Fire style. Blazing meteors, said Gazuki, releasing several fireballs at the two Janin, with the flames growing even larger and more powerful by the windcutter jutsu. The sight making Kakashi and Yamato quickly use a substitution to avoid getting hit by the wind blades and fireballs. 
with Yugo having recovered from the previous hit from Mizuki before getting behind the two experiments, creating five shadow clones that all rushed the two from blind spots. Dance of the Crescent Moon, said Yugo, as Gazuki and Mizuki looked to her and her clones before they all leapt through the air in a formation reminiscent of a crescent moon. With the sudden change making Gazuki and Mizuki look to see where they landed as Yugo and her clones rushed them with their swords drawn. Fire style. Running fire, said Gazuki, creating a circle of fire around him and Mizuki. Wind style. Divine wind, Mizuki said, releasing a gust of wind that began forming into several mini tornadoes. Which combined with the flaming circle, creating tornadoes of fire that rushed right towards Yugo and her clones, incinerating each of them until nothing but ash was left. Though suddenly the two experiments found themselves ensnared by multiple branches emerging from the ground. With Yamato soon emerging from the ground, with his right arm current being made of wood and digging into the ground. Wood style. Smothering binding jutsu. Said Yamato before they heard the sound of birds chirping, as Kakashi and Yugo both leapt from the trees, the purplette having been hidden the entire time while sending clones to distract them. Rakery, Kakashi said, diving down towards Gazuki to stab his rakery into his chest. Hazy Moon Knight, said Yugo while swinging her sword in a circular motion, leaving behind after images before rushing Mizuki. The copy ninja impaled Gazuki in the chest, while Yugo stabbed her sword through Mizuki's neck, killing both of the failed experiments only for the three to be shocked when Gazuki and Mizuki dissolved into mud, showing they were only Earth style. Shadow clones. Earth style. Earth corridor. Gazuki shouted as he emerged from the ground before the it began rising up around the Konoha ninja until they were completely trapped inside the now expansive cavern Gazuki created. With the bull. Like and horse. Like creatures being at one of the exits, while Mizuki had three clones at the other three exits. Lightning style. Depth charge, said Mizuki and his clones, as all of them surrounded their bodies in lightning before swinging their axes at the tunnels, unleashing powerful bolts of electricity into them. While within the tunnel, Kakashi, Yamato and Yugo heard the sound of electricity before their eyes widened as they soon saw the lightning come at them from either side. Earth style. Mud wall, Kakashi said, going through hand signs before slamming his hands on the ground, creating two stone walls on either side of them to block the lightning. Wood style. Wood locking wall, said Yamato, going through hand signs as wooden roots emerged from the ground and surrounded the trio in a dome of wood for added defense. Getting their shields up just in time as the bolts of electricity crashed into and through the stone walls, hitting the wooden dome with Yamato gritting his teeth as he used more chakra to keep the dome up. Only stopping once they heard the lightning finally fade away. Before tensing as they then heard Gazuki and Mizuki attacking the dome with their weapons trying to break through. Making the three trade looks, knowing this was going to be more difficult than they thought. With Naruto, Satsuki, Hanada, and Fu. Meanwhile, Naruto and the girls had landed on the ground after being sent flying, making them grunt at the impact before getting up. Are you three alright? Naruto asked while looking at the girls as they picked themselves up. Yeah, we're good. Replied Satsuki. Hanada and Fu nodding in agreement. Was that one of the experiments that attacked? Hanada asked as she activated her Baikugan to keep an eye out, in case any other of the experiments were nearby. They've probably learned about you all being here and that three of their members are now dead. Which means these ones are likely stronger than the other three. Fu stated, making the Konoha Genin nod in agreement, before they tensed when they suddenly saw something speeding through the trees. Hanada. Satsuki said as he drew her swords and combined them together into a bow, with Naruto drawing his katana as well, all of them looking around for the experiment. I, I'm having trouble following it, it's moving so fast, there, said Hanada, pointing to where the experiment was going to be, making Satsuki immediately shoot an arrow into trees, only to end up missing. Before they were forced to jump out of way of several crescent-shaped blades of chakra came shooting out of trees at them with Naruto tensing as he quickly raised his sword, blocking Lycan's claws as the wolf. Like experiment leapt out of trees at the Uzumaki. Only to grunt in pain when Lycan opened his muzzle, unleashing a loud sonic howl as a blue concussive blast. The blast sending Naruto flying into a tree, though he managed to catch himself and flip around while landing on his feet, sticking to the tree. Before jumping away when Lycan jumped at him, his claws tearing through the tree with ease. Water style. Rising Water Slicer. 
Fu said while going through hand signs before slamming her hands on the ground, causing a linear wave of water to shoot up and rush towards Lycan. Lightning style. Electric shock needles, said Satsuki while creating several needles made of lightning before launching them at Lycan. With Lycan opening his mouth and unleashing another sonic howl at the two jutsu, stopping them from hitting him before sending them right back at Satsuki and Fu. The two attacks combining as a result and making it even more powerful. Wind style. Divine mountain wind. Naruto said while jumping in front of Satsuki and Fu, creating a vortex of wind that he launched at the attack with the two colliding against each other, with the Uzumaki pushing more chakra into his jutsu while Lycan began howling louder. Luckily the stalemate ended as Hanada took the chance to get in close behind Lycan. Fire style. Flame capture. Hanada said, creating a whip of fire which she launched at Lycan, wrapping it around his neck and stopped his howl. Allowing Naruto's wind vortex to slam into him, which also enhanced the fire whip, while sending Lycan crashing into a tree which collapsed on top of him. Though not a moment later, Lycan threw the tree off of him, roaring loudly as Chakra flared around him before he vanished in a burst of speed. None of them having time to react as Lycan appeared behind Hinata, slamming his fist into the side of her head, sending the blue net flying through the trees. With him then appearing in front of Naruto, Satsuki and Fu before bringing his claws up and uppercutting both girls, launching them into the air before then unleashing a sonic howl at Naruto sending him crashing into a tree. The Wolf Like experiment keeping up the howl, keeping the Jinchuriki pinned to the tree as he moved in closer, increasing the pressure of the blast. Though suddenly Naruto started glowing before he exploded, sending Lycan skidding back, growling at seeing it was just a clone. Looking around, he didn't see any sign of Hinata, Satsuki or Fu, showing they'd escaped as well. Raising his head, Lycan sniffed the air until he caught their scent before taking off through the forest after them. Soon catching sight of the Uchiha jumping through the trees, making Lycan release another sonic howl at her, only for Satsuki to jump out of the way by going down to the ground. The sight making Lycan leap right at the Ravenet, but was thrown back as Satsuki immediately turned around, showing her bow and knocked arrow. Lycan not having a chance to dodge as Satsuki fired the arrow, but rather than impale him, it split into four pieces, revealing a net that ensnared Lycan. With Lycan finding himself pinned against a tree and trapped in the net before he saw Satsuki holding a length of ninja wire attached to the net. The Uchiha then bit down on the end of it and went through hand signs. Fire Style Dragon Fire Jutsu Satsuki said through the wire before unleashing a stream of fire that trailed along the wire right towards Lycan consuming the experiment in a wave of flames. Though Lycan managed to let out a sonic howl, dispersing the flames back before tearing through the net and rushing Satsuki, roaring and prepared to tear her apart with his claws, only to find himself knocked to the side as Naruto jumped through the trees, slamming his foot into Lycan's head. The kick sending Lycan crashing through the ground into a large pit with stone spikes at the bottom. Lycan managed to dig his claws into the side of the pit, saving himself from being impaled on the spikes, before looking up to see Naruto and Satsuki standing there. Water style. Surging sea. Said Naruto after going through hand signs before expelling a large amount of water at Lycan, the experiment gritting its teeth as the pressure pushed him further into the pit. Lightning style. Lightning ball. Satsuki said creating several balls of lightning she launched at Lycan, electrocuting him which was only made more painful from the water acting as a conductor. With Lycan unable to keep his grip and fell down into the pit, but unleashed a powerful sonic howl at the spikes, managing to destroy them so he only landed on solid ground rather than be impaled. Once the attacks stopped, Lycan leapt out of the pit only to see Naruto and Satsuki were gone, making him roar in rage before taking off through the forest again. Though he didn't get far when he saw a massive log came swinging towards him, which Lycan was able to grab hold of and jump past it, only to see even more logs swinging around him forcing the wolf, like experiment to constantly keep moving to avoid getting hit by any of the logs. Lycan then began feeling droplets hitting him, making him look up only to frown at seeing it was raining. Though when he looked at the droplets on him, his eyes widened as rather than being regular water, the droplets were completely black, before he sniffed them and realized it wasn't water, it's oil. Water style. Tornado of water, said Fu as she and Hinata jumped down a good distance away from Lycan who didn't have time to react as the oil ran began swirling around him as a large vortex. Fire style. Fox fire. Hanada said creating 10 blue fireballs she launched at the vortex, 
the oil igniting the moment the fire made contact and began burning lichen. The wolf. Like experiment tried escaping the flames but couldn't get through them with how hot they were burning. Before he looked up and saw that there was still an opening at the top, leading lichen to aim beneath him and released a sonic howl propelling himself into the air and out of the fiery vortex. Landing on the ground, lichen saw once again that his prey had escaped, enraging him even more than he already was. Though rather than rush off to find them again, lichen instead began swinging his claws all around him, unleashing dozens of crescent shaped blades of chakra that tore through the surrounding trees. He continued this for several moments until soon a good portion of the forest was destroyed, with Lycan then sniffing the air until he caught the genin's scent. But instead of going after them himself, Lycan howled loudly as his chakra flared around him before moving and forming three wolves made of chakra, which he directed to go after the genin. While Lycan began running at full speed to circle around them and attack them from the front while his wolves attacked from behind. While the genin were quickly jumping through the trees, pleased that they've managed to injure Lycan with their teamwork, traps, and ambushes. Though when they sensed him start destroying the forest, they knew they needed to think of something to end the fight, not wanting to risk Lycan starting to take it more seriously. Only for them to look behind them, surprised when they saw the chakra wolves chasing after them, not expecting Lycan to be able to do that. Before they quickly separated when the wolves began closing the distance between them. To Kigakir style, water-cutting sword, said Fu as she spat out some water which then solidified in the form of a sword, using it to block one of the wolves when it jumped at her, only to bite down on her sword. With Satsuki ducking under the second wolf as it tried tackling her, the Uchiha quickly drawing one of her swords and sliced the wolf across its side, only to be surprised when it wasn't phased by the attack. Before she raised her sword blocking the wolf when it slashed its claws at her, quickly drawing her second sword and slamming the flat of it against the wolf's head. Hanada sidestepped the third wolf, delivering a palm strike to its head watching as it was knocked back into a tree before falling to the ground, only for it to get back up and shake its head, growling at the blue net before leaping up at her, forcing Hanada to jump back to avoid getting bitten by the wolf. While Naruto drew his katana and went to help the girls deal with the wolves, before quickly turning around and blocking Lycan's claws. The Uzumaki not having time to react when Lycan brought his other hand up, delivering an uppercut that knocked Naruto into the air. The wolf. Like experiment then jumping up above Naruto and unleashed a sonic howl that sent him crashing into the ground. Which also distracted the girls, giving the chakra wolves the chance to attack them, with Fu getting tackled from behind and knocked to the ground. With Satsuki gritting her teeth as a wolf bit into her shoulder before being thrown to the ground, and Hinata had claws raked across her stomach sending her stumbling back to the ground as well. The four genin stood up, only to see Lycan and his chakra wolves standing across from them, making them tense as Naruto, Satsuki and Fu held their blades at the ready while Hinata got into her stance. Not a moment later, Lycan roared as he and his wolves charged the genin. With Kakashi, Yamato, and Yugo. Back with the Janin, they were still having some difficulty against Gazuki and Mizuki, though they managed to gain an advantage once Kakashi revealed his Sharingan to better predict their movements. But even so, the two experiments were proving to be a powerful and dangerous team. With the trio having managed to put some distance from the two experiments to try and think of a plan. I think I may have an idea for how we could beat them, but we'll only have one chance. Kakashi said to Yamato and Yugo, who glanced at him for a moment. What do we do? Yugo asked since they needed to end this fight quickly and make sure the genin are alright, having no doubt another experiment was attacking them as well. Just keep them distracted for a while and when I give the signal, hit them hard and fast. Kakashi replied with the two nodding in response before they all tensed, only to immediately jump out of the way when a giant stone dragon shot up from the ground beneath them. Lightning style. Lightning beast tracking. Said Kakashi, creating a beast of lightning that charged at the stone dragon, tearing through it, before Gazuki and Mizuki emerged from the ground as well. Wind style. Great task of the dragon. Mizuki yelled while swinging his axe at the ninja, creating a giant tornado that rushed towards them as well dispelling the lightning beast. Fire style. Great dragon fire jutsu. Shouted Gazuki, unleashing a large dragon. Shaped fireball that collided with the tornado, igniting it, and creating a massive flaming vortex that rushed towards the ninja. The sight making their eyes widen before Kakashi and Yamato both began rapidly going through hand signs. Water style. Great Waterfall Jutsu. 
Kakashi and Yamato said as they both expelled a massive amount of water at the vortex, the attacks colliding together creating a large amount of steam blocking everyone's view. Wind style. Great breakthrough, said Mizuki, unleashing a powerful blast of wind, blowing away the steam only for them to not see the ninja anywhere before Yamato came running out of the trees. Earth style. Earth flow spear said Yamato while going through hand signs before slamming his hands on the ground, causing multiple earth spikes to shoot up from the ground towards Kazuki and Mizuki. The two experiments swung their weapons at the spikes as they approached, slicing or smashing right through them. Only for this to leave themselves open as Yugo and a clone rushed them from behind, slashing Kazuki and Mizuki across the back with their swords. Making both of them grunt in pain before quickly turning around to attack, but were thrown back as both Yugos suddenly exploded showing they were just clones. With Kakashi seeing his chance as he looked at Gazuki and Mizuki while channeling more chakra to his Sharingan, causing it to transform him to now resemble three triangles wrapping themselves around the pupil, similar to a pinwheel. Kamui, said Kakashi while focusing on the two experiments as a swirling distortion appeared between them, sucking Gazuki and Mizuki into it. Both of them tried escaping the distortion, only to cry out in pain when Kakashi stopped his jutsu right when their arms were pulled in, separating the arms that held their weapons from their bodies. With Yugo and Yamato seeing this as their chance to finish them off, the purplette leaping into the air at Mizuki, swinging her sword and separating his head from his body. Wood style. Cutting jutsu. Said Yamato, grabbing a wooden spear as it grew out of his palm and threw it at Gazuki, impaling the experiment before multiple wooden spikes burst out of his body. Seeing the two were now dead, Kakashi quickly covered his Sharingan, panting slightly at having to use Kamui combined with all the chakra he already used. Are you alright Kakashi? Senpei? Yamato asked as he and Yugo approached the copy ninja, who nodded in response. I'm fine, nothing that some rest won't fix. Let's seal up these bodies to be studied as well, and then go find the genin to make sure they're alright. Kakashi replied with the two nodding as they went to seal away Gozuki's and Mizuki's bodies before taking off to where they could sense the genin. With Naruto, Satsuki, Hanada, and Fu, while with the genin, they were now put on the defensive against Lycan and his chakra wolves, with Satsuki, Hanada and Fu having to deal with the wolves. While Naruto went against Lycan himself, giving them no chances to escape or assist the others without leaving themselves open to be attacked. Naruto gritted his teeth as he tried pushing Lycan back with his katana, only for the wolf. Like experiment to not budge an inch. Though managed to avoid his claws when he tried delivering another uppercut, giving Naruto the chance to quickly move to the side of Lycan. Making him stumble slightly from the sudden loss of leverage, before growling when Naruto slashed him across the arm. The Uzumaki then tried jumping back, only to find himself stopped when Lycan grabbed him by the leg and slammed him down into the ground raising his sword again when Lycan moved to stab his claws into his chest, Naruto's attention turned towards the girls when he heard them cry out. Looking only to see that Hinata had been bitten in the leg by one of the wolves, with this distracting Satsuki and Fu, leaving them open to attack as well. With them now being pushed further and further back before the wolves were now circling them. The sight making Naruto's eyes widen, before glared at Lycan and slammed his foot into his chest pushing the experiment back. Quickly getting up, Naruto went to go help the girls only to be stopped by Lycan again, with him tackling the Jinchuriki and pinning him to the ground. With Lycan unleashing a powerful sonic roar right at Naruto, making him cry out at the close. Range vibrations hitting him, which also got the girls' attention and saw what was happening to Naruto, making their eyes widen. Though they didn't have time to try and help him, as the wolves leapt at them, forcing the three to keep fighting them off, but could feel themselves getting tired. Gritting his teeth as he struggled to get Lycan off of him, Naruto caught sight of the girls being attacked by the wolves again, seeing how they were slowing down and receiving more injuries. The sight angering him even further as he glared at Lycan. Unaware as his eyes began glowing brightly with his pupils dilating, his nails extending into claws, his canines extending into fangs, and his ears becoming pointed. The sudden transformation breaking Lycan's concentration for a moment, giving Naruto the opportunity to slam his head into the experiments, thrown Lycan off of him. Getting up, Naruto growled at Lycan before charging him, the wolf. Like experiment doing the same as they both collided against each other. With Naruto slamming his fist into Lycan's muzzle before raising his arm to block his claws before grabbing his wrist and snapping it, 
making Lycan roar in pain. Not stopping there, Naruto grabbed Lycan by his leg, lifting him up and slammed him into the ground before spinning him around and throwing him right through a tree. With the experiment dealt with for a moment, the Uzumaki rushed the chakra wolves, tackling one and actually managing to hurt it as he ripped its head off, before turning his attention to the other two as they rushed him, only to be thrown back when Naruto roared at them, unleashing a purple concussive blast at both wolves that dispelled them. With his appearance shocking the girls, but also relieved to see he's alright and dealt with the wolves. Only for them to turn their attention towards Lycan when he burst out of the trees, roaring loudly and charging at them. But before they could get ready to fight the experiment, Naruto rushed him and slammed into Lycan, knocking him back. Not stopping, Lycan went to attack Naruto only for the Uzumaki let out a sonic howl, roaring loudly as it threw Lycan back. The volume even forcing Satsuki, Kanata and Fu to cover their ears at how loud it was. While Naruto kept roaring and hitting Lycan, pushing the wolf, like experiment further back until he was pinned against a tree. Once the whiskered ravenette finally stopped his attack, the girls were shocked when rather than try attacking, Lycan actually whimpered and lowered his head in submission. Did he just, make it submit? Fu asked in disbelief, while Satsuki and Hinata slowly nodded. I guess he showed it who's the alpha, stated Satsuki with a small smirk. Though not a moment later Kakashi, Yamato, and Yugo appeared, immediately wrapping ninja wire around Lycan before putting a seal on him to suppress his chakra along with knocking the experiment unconscious. Are you all alright? Kakashi asked while looking at his students and Fu before his attention turned to Naruto's appearance, something Yamato and Yugo also noticed. The two surprised at Naruto's appearance, thinking for a moment that it could be the Kyubi's chakra, only to not sense the Biju's power. Making them wonder what could have caused the transformation, before Kakashi and Yamato wondered if it was the result of the mask that the Hokage had told them, merged with Naruto. Yeah, we're fine, a bit beaten up, but we're all fine, replied Hanada as they approached the Janin with Naruto's features returning to normal at seeing the three were all right. Good, we've taken care of the other two experiments that ambushed us and are glad to see you four handled this one yourselves. Yugo said, seeing that while they were injured and exhausted, they still lasted this long against one of these experiments, a really strong one if Kazuki and Mizuki were anything to go by. Even better that they're still alive, so Ibiki can see about getting some information out of them," added Yamato as he and Kakashi grabbed the unconscious Lycan. Now let's head back to get some medical treatment and rest, along with seeing what this one knows," said Kakashi, with the others nodding in agreement before making their way back to the village with Lycan in tow. Though unknown to the ninja, they were being watched by someone from the shadows before the figure left. Later. Unknown location. The figure knelt before Ryujin, having just filled him in everything that happened with Gazuki and Mizuki having been killed, while Lycan had been captured. Something that now angered Ryujin, that two more of his followers were dead and another was captured. Likely to be interrogated for anything he knew, meaning it wouldn't be long before the ninja located their base. It seems these ninja are bigger threats than we anticipated, if they've now taken out half of our numbers. I suppose it's about time I started treating them seriously, and if they wish to find us then we'll let them. In fact, we'll personally head to their location, ourselves." Ryujin stated as he stood up, intending to launch a full-on assault on the ninja. If they wish to continue impeding his plans, then he'll let them experience just who it is they're daring to stand against before ending their lives. Once they got back to town, Kakashi and Yamato gave Lycan to Ibiki so that he could start questioning the experiment to see what knowledge he had. Kabuto had sent Yugo and Fu to be examined prior to the arrival of Team 7. As Kabuto examined their wounds and began to treat them, he said, From what I see, it looks like you all got off lucky with these new experiments since it seems like they were much stronger than the previous three. Knowing that Gazuki and Mizuki had been formidable rivals, Kakashi remarked, Yeah, they also had much better teamwork. Since they would have had to worry about caring for Kakashi if his Kamui hadn't worked, Yamato said, Agreed. If the fight had gone any longer, I'm unsure if we would have been able to win. This would have given the two experiments even more opportunities to defeat them. Yugo asked, glancing at the four genin and considering their condition upon arrival, what about the genin? How are they? Naruto, Hanada, and Fu nodded in agreement as Satsuki responded, we already said we're fine. While it's good for you to say that, it's better for you to know your own limits. Satsuki and Hanada both have their share of injuries 
Plus they were running low on chakra when you all got back. Though Naruto and Fu, you both are free to go since your injuries seem to have already healed for the most part and your chakra reserves recovered as well. So, you both can go. Kabuto replied, having only healed the injuries that that remained. In the process, Fu was also discreetly given a tracking seal, and it was planned to give Sasori the tools to track Fu as soon as he had a chance. The two Jinchuriki nodded and left the clinic, walking around the town and enjoying the freedom from having to worry about training or fighting experiments. While strolling, Naruto observed that Fu gave him a few fleeting glances before turning away. Bewildering the whiskered Ravenette with her actions, considering how forthcoming she has been since they began their training. Is something wrong, Fu? Naruto inquired, attempting to ascertain the cause of the Greenette's discomfort. Fu said shyly, causing Naruto to frown at her. What, oh no, nothing's wrong Naruto. I just, I never really got the chance to thank you, for teaching me the shadow clone jutsu, and for being my friend. Naruto said, you don't have to thank me for being your friend, and you definitely don't have to thank me for teaching you the shadow clone jutsu, f, however, when Fu shook her head, Naruto stopped speaking. Yes I do. Before I met you, Satsuki, and Hinata, I only ever had Shibuki as a friend and someone who'd teach and train me. Then I met you three and even after how I acted when I woke up, then when I accidentally exposed you as a Jinchuriki, you still chose to be my friend, even teaching me a jutsu to help with my training. It, it all really means a lot especially since you know what it's like to be alone, then to have someone who cares about you and wants to be your friend. So, yes I do have to thank you, Naruto, because it means so much to me. F said, beaming at the Uzumaki looked at her with disbelief. You really don't have to thank me, Fu. Even if you weren't a Jinchuriki, I'd still want to be your friend since you're a really kind and good person to be around, along with always trying to look on the bright side of things. And anyone who can't see how amazing you are isn't worth wasting time over. Besides you've helped us as well by showing us the water style ninjutsu you know. So, if you're going to thank me, then I should thank you as well for being my friend and helping with my training," replied Naruto, causing the tacky Kunoichi to look blushed at his words. Touched by Naruto's admiration for her and his willingness to remain friends with her even if she weren't a Jinchuriki, Fu said, Oh. Oh. Okay. Okay. I'm glad I could help. Fearing that her friend would be punished for teaching her a secret technique, Fu nervously inquired, but, um, will you get in trouble, with teaching me the shadow clone jutsu? If anyone has a problem with me teaching you the jutsu, then it's their problem to deal with since I don't really care if someone doesn't like it. For me, my friends come first and the village comes second, if that means teaching someone from another village a secret technique that can help them, then I'll do it. You'd also be the only one in Taki that'd really be able to take advantage of it, as I doubt anyone else would have enough chakra to make that many shadow clones. Naruto said, once more astonished by F, the way he prioritized his friends. Despite hearing and seeing that Naruto didn't seem to think highly of his village, the Greenette couldn't help but stare at him inquisitively. He doesn't even seem to like it, Fu thought, understanding that even though Jinchuriki were typically disliked by their home villages, they remained devoted. Fu asked, unable to contain her curiosity about Naruto's perception of his village, um, Naruto. If you don't mind me asking. Do you even like Konoha? Naruto gave her a quick glance before turning to face forward. Naruto responded, surprising Fu, saying, If you'd asked me that a few months ago, I wouldn't have hesitated to say yes. That I loved Konoha and even wanted to become Hokage, despite how I was treated for being a Jinchuriki. How I wanted to have everyone acknowledge and see me for who I am, rather than who they see me as. And now? Fu inquired, sensing that something had to have occurred to alter his perspective on the village. Naruto questioned, making Fu frown at the abrupt inquiry, now, now I can't really look at it the same way. Did you know you were a Jinchuriki from the very beginning? Naruto said. I was old enough to know what was happening when the Nanabi was sealed in me, of course I did, Fu remarked, understanding that Jinchuriki were immediately aware of their status. I wasn't, I was made a Jinchuriki the day I was born, and I didn't know that for the rest of my life. But the rest of the village knew, or at least those old enough to remember, and the only thing they saw me as was the Kiyubi. They either hated me or feared me, which led to them ignoring me, treating me like I didn't exist. And while the younger generations didn't know, they saw how their parents treated me and emulated them, or they saw me as the dead last in the academy. Naruto then revealed, shocking the Greenette once more with the revelation that he hadn't even realized he was a Jinchuriki, 
but everyone else knew, making her look at him sadly. At least she understood why almost everyone in Taki viewed her with fear or hatred. Fu had no idea what it would be like to be detested for something as trivial as ignorance. To have everyone around you deny your existence, to be alone and ignored. I only learned I was a Jinchuriki a little over a month ago, after failing the graduation test for a third time, I was tricked by one of my former teachers into stealing the forbidden scroll. While being told it was a make. Up test and I had to learn a jutsu from it, which is also how I learned the shadow clone jutsu. But I learned it was a trick by my former teacher, who used me to take the scroll for himself and planned to kill me, all while telling me about the Kiyubi in the process. If it hadn't been for another of my teachers, I likely would have died. I was able to beat the traitor in the end, but I now knew the truth and that the Hokage had been lying to me my entire life about why I was hated. He tried justifying it by saying he wanted me to have a normal childhood. Naruto said with a scoff at the end, while Fu frowned at this, not liking that he had to learn his status in such a way and from a traitor of all people. I'm sorry you had to learn about it like that, when you should have known from the beginning. It might suck learning you're a Jinchuriki, but at least you'd have some solace in knowing why you're hated and feared, rather than thinking it's because of yourself. Said F, and Naruto reciprocated by nodding. Thanks for that Fu. Anyway, to answer your question, right now my feelings towards Konoha are complicated, I can't say I like or dislike the village right now, maybe that'll change later on. But now, I simply can't bring myself to care about the village or what anyone there thinks about me. The only opinions I care about are the ones of people I care about, which includes you, Fu. And it's those people I'll do anything to protect and help in any way I can." Replied Naruto as he examined the Taki Kunoichi, her blush at his words. Fu said, nodding at the Uzumaki, W. We. Well. With everything you went through, it's understandable if you wouldn't like your village. Wondering about Fu's life in Taki compared to his own, Naruko asked, What about you? I know your only friend in Taki is Shibuki, but what was it like growing up there, knowing you were a Jinchuriki? It, it was pretty much the same as yours, being hated and feared, being alone, though no one ignored or acted like I didn't exist. But they made sure to never miss a chance to remind me that I wasn't wanted or liked. I'm even stuck living on the very outskirts of the village, while still being in it, as I'm sure the only reason they don't force me to live outside is to make sure I don't try running away. I can't even go outside the village alone without a team accompanying me, but I learned to get used to it, knowing there wasn't anything I could do. The only good part is having Shibuki around to train and protect me, he also taught me the importance of friendship and loyalty. Though, it's hard to see how they're important when I didn't have any friends in the village I was loyal to wanted nothing to do with me," said Fu, looking down before looking at Naruto when he put a hand on her shoulder. Smiling at the greenette, Naruto said, like I said, anyone who can't see the kind and good person you are, isn't worth your time. If they don't want to do anything with you, then it's their loss, because I'm happy we got to meet and become friends." Fu smiled back, placing her hand over his. After. Naruto and Fu strolled around the town for a while before stopping for lunch at a small food stand. The Uzumaki were happy to see that they also served ramen. With four bowls of ramen consumed in less than 20 minutes, Fu surmised, you must really like ramen. Naruto said, attracting Taki Kunoichi's attention, yeah, it's really great, but it's not as good as Ichiraku's. Ichiraku? Fu inquired, wanting to know what that meant. Ichiraku is a ramen stand in Konoha that is owned by a father and daughter named Tuchi and Ayame. They're some of the few people I still care about in the village, along with being one of the very few who never hated or feared me. They'd always let me eat at Ichiraku when I was hungry and didn't have food or go anywhere else, becoming their best customer. It's also where me, Hanada, and Satsuki started going once we began training together. Naruto answered, making Fu wince at the thought of Naruto being ejected from places, but he grinned that he had people who were willing to support him. Naruto nodded in agreement as Fu said, they sound great. Naruto surprised the greenette by saying, they are, and if you want, I can introduce you to them. But, we're from different villages, frowned Fu, expressing her doubt that meeting more people Naruto cares about would be feasible given their separate villages and her limited freedom as a Jinchuriki. That doesn't mean you can't visit or even come back with us before returning to Taki, along with the Chunin exams taking place in Konoha. So we'll still be able to see each other even after the mission is over. Naruto stated, surprising F once more. Since they were from different villages, 
Fu wasn't sure if they would still see each other or stay friends after the mission was over. You'd? You'd still want to be friends? Even after we have to go back to our villages? She asked. Of course we'll still be friends. We said we'd be your friends and we're going to be Fu. It doesn't matter if we're from different villages, different nations, even different continents. If you ever need me, Satsuki or Hinata for anything, then we'll be there to help you, no matter what it is or where you are. Said Naruto, as F looked him in the eyes and a bright smile. Feeling touched and delighted that Naruto would still want to be her friend even after the mission is over, Fu exclaimed, Th. Thank you, Naruto. That. That really means a lot, that we'll still be friends and that you'd go that far to help me. The Taki Kunoichi then surprised both herself and Naruto by leaning in to give him a cheek kiss. The two genin blushed at her move and hastily returned to their meal. Though Fu couldn't help but smile as the two gave each other a fleeting glance before turning away, causing Naruto to grin in addition to bringing her joy. Alongside Ibiki. Ibiki, in the meantime, stood in front of Lycan's cell and glared at the experiment which was shackled and chained to the wall to prevent him from moving even an inch. Unfortunately, since Lycan's return, that has been the only positive development. Every attempt by the interrogator to force the experimenter to reveal everything he knew has failed. Ibiki began by merely attempting to scare Lycan with all of his abilities before turning to his summoning. Torture Chamber Garot wire was used to restrain Lycan, tightening around his limbs each time he resisted speaking. Prior to attempting to slice, burn, and electrocute Lycan in an attempt to obtain some answers, you could just try beating him until he spoke. Only for all of his efforts to be met with silence, demonstrating a strong defiance of any forms of abuse and questioning. When Ibiki questioned the experiment, all it did was growl or snap at him. Ibiki said, beginning to feel Lycan is too much of an animal to be able to speak, and that, I'm starting to think you can't even talk. Ibiki's eyes narrowed at Lycan as he growled, still furious at having been defeated and made to submit, of course I can talk human. Ibiki demanded, hoping that things would finally move forward, so you can talk. Yet you've remained silent this entire time. Why? Lycan said, punching the cell bars and glaring at the wolf. Like experiment, because I find your attempt to interrogate me amusing, I've experienced far worse than you can inflict. Not that it would matter if I did tell you what you wanted to know, you'll be dead soon while any information you learn will be pointless. If that's a threat, you'll soon regret it, because if you think this is the worst I can do, you'll see that everything up to this point has just been me being nice. So, tell me what you're talking about!" exclaimed Ibiki, aware that he would be demonstrating to liken his true abilities if he didn't start providing him with answers. Ibiki's eyes widened as Lycan asked with a dark, fanged grin, you still don't get it, do you? You've killed five of us already and now captured one. Ask yourself human. Do you really think Ryujin is going to ignore that you've wiped out half his forces or is he going to make you all regret it? They might be dealing with a much bigger issue now than they were before, when they were probably mentally cursing because most of their fighters were still healing from the last battle. Ibiki left Lycan alone, knowing he had no time to waste and set off running to warn the others of what was approaching. Lycan waited until he was certain he was alone, listening to Ibiki's footsteps, then let out a grunt as his bones started to snap and realign. The shackles and chains surrounding him loosened as his body shrank and grew more human. The experiment quickly succeeded in freeing his claws, and he started to move back while growling and stabbing the suppression seal with his claws. Without pausing, Lycan tore the skin and seal off of his body, roaring as his injuries started to heal and his chakra started to flow through him once more, prior to tearing off the last of the shackles and chains to achieve total freedom. Now freed of his restraints and suppression seal, Lycan tore through the bars and rushed out of the prison, intent on hunting down the brat that beat him and rip him apart. In company with Ryujin, Ryujin stood outside the town wall, staring at the barrier the ninja believed would keep him out, with him and his remaining forces having moved straight towards the town upon discovering Lycan had been taken prisoner and Mizuki and Gazuki had died. They had come across the ninja's set traps en route to town, which turned out to be much more lethal than they had initially thought causing Ryujin to lose the majority of his army, but he was aware that it didn't matter because he still had his elite supporters. Compared to the others, they both appeared more human. The first is a young man with pale skin and long blue hair with two long violet strands on each side of his face. He has claw. Like nails and two golden hair separators supporting his long blue hair. 
His forehead veins are very noticeable and almost completely replace his eyebrows. His eyes had noticeable dark bags and were red without pupils. In addition, he sports three horns on his forehead. Two in the middle and one on each side. He was dressed in a long, sleeved, full, length ninja uniform with mesh around the neck, wrists, and center, hanging three tiny ribbons. And the second featured a young man of average height who was muscular. He had shoulder, length, spiky, dark, green hair parted at the middle of his forehead small beady black eyes and pale ash gray skin with two green marks around both upper arms and legs he had sharp nails and prominent fangs as well he was wearing a blue sleeveless tunic with a dark turquoise and white pattern that showed off his bare chest he encircled his ankles and wrists with bracelets of light hues even though they were still not on ryujin's level these were two of the strongest experiments that had been set free savage and murk as Ryujin turned to face the wall, lightning started to appear all around his body. He then extended his hand in that direction. Before Ryujin unleashed a powerful bolt of lightning at the wall, the lightning started to intensify and began to gather in his hand. Lightning tore through the town, the buildings, and everyone in its path, shooting straight through the wall and leaving a trail of destruction in its wake. As Ryujin, Merc, and Savage arrive in the town, they witness people frantically running around and yelling out of fear. Merc and Savage attempted to attack, but Ryujin raised his hand before they could do so. Ryujin gave the order, wanting Lycan dead for letting himself be captured. No, leave the ninja and these fools to me. The two of you find Lycan and kill him, he's already proven to have outlived his usefulness. When Savage got the chance to kill Lycan, he exclaimed excitedly, ha 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 ha, even better, I always wanted my own wolf pelt to hang up. With a quick bow, Merc said, we'll see it done. Ryujin, Sama, and the two took off to find Lycan. After the two departed, Ryujin proceeded towards the village, shooting lightning bolts at anyone he came across. The experiment was not content with just killing the citizens and the ninja, even though the lightning wasn't strong enough to kill them, it was only enough to render them unconscious. In order to make them suffer more and to make them into examples, Ryujin wanted them captured. Lightning style. Depth charge. Ryujin exclaimed engulfing himself in lightning chakra and launching an all encompassing lightning bolt that destroyed everything in his path and electrocuted everyone in close proximity until they lost consciousness wood style smothering binding jutsu ryujin frowned when he suddenly found himself restrained by several wooden tendrils along with feeling his chakra being suppressed looking to where the wood was coming from ryujin saw yamato holding his now wooden arm out towards him which extended into the tendrils bindings him before Yugo materialized behind him, he let out a grunt as a sword appeared from his chest, sensing that the blow wasn't intended to be fatal. As he, Ibiki, Kabuto, Satsuki, and Hanada materialized around Ryujin, prepared in case he managed to escape his confines, Kakashi said, I take it that you're Ryujin. Ryujin, looking rather calm despite being restrained and impaled, said, you would be correct, and you are the ninja that have been a thorn in my side. Given your presence has been interfering in my goals, I'm sure you understand why it is I'll be enjoying making you all suffer. The ninja became tense at the possibility that Ryujin had something planned. Prior to, Ryujin, abruptly erupting into a lightning strike, the ninja had to all duck back to prevent electrocution. They didn't look until they heard Yamato cry out, and when they did, their eyes widened to see Ryujin, who was now completely covered in electricity, holding the janin by the head. Yamato was electrocuted in the experiment and then thrown against a wall, whereupon he also lost consciousness. With his eyes narrowed into slits, Ryujin turned to face the ninja and said, lightning style, lightning strike armor. Satsuki cried out, fire style, dragon fire jutsu, as she threw a blaze of fire at Ryujin. Fire style, flame capture, exclaimed Hinata, launching a whip of fire at Ryujin in addition. Wind style, Air bullets! exclaimed Kakashi, unleashing a series of wind blasts that strengthened the fire ninjutsu and sent them hurtling toward Ryujin. But then Yugo turned and charged Ryujin, who vanished in a flash of speed and reappeared behind the ninja. Secret sword! Moonlight! exclaimed Yugo, charging toward Ryujin quickly enough to create afterimages, but before she could get close enough to strike him with her sword. When Ryujin used his lone finger to block the purplet's sword, the purplet's eyes widened. 
She then gagged when he slammed his foot into her chest, sending Yugo flying through a wall. When Kabuto attempted to sneak up on him with a chakra skeletal, Ryujin then avoided him, slamming the medic. Nin's head into the ground after shocking him and grabbing him by the neck. Ibiki slammed his hands on the ground and yelled, summoning. Iron Maiden. This caused an Iron Maneki Neko to emerge from beneath Ryujin and begin encircling him. Only for the Iron Maiden to be blasted apart by Ryujin, who vanished in another burst of speed and smashed his fist into Ibiki's stomach. Ibiki was also knocked unconscious by Ryujin's elbow to the back of the Tokabetsu Janin's head, causing him to double over in agony. Then, even though Ryujin was already low on chakra, he turned and blocked a kanai from Kakashi, who had revealed his Sharingan. Ryujin said, smirking slightly, using your Sharingan already? You must be desperate to end this fight, not that you had much of a chance to begin with. Then, as Kakashi attempted to stab a rakery into his chest, Ryujin grabbed Kakashi's other hand. Lightning style. Electric shock needles exclaimed Hanada as she produced a number of electrical needles to shoot at Ryujin. Satsuki exclaimed, water style, water bullet jutsu, and let loose several bursts of water that, when they came into contact with the needles, turned electrified. Before the genin's eyes grew wide, Ryujin swiftly spun around and shocked and horrified Satsuki and Hanada by using Kakashi as a shield while using their jutsu to hit their teacher. However, they soon discovered that Ryujin had grabbed them, dropped Kakashi to the ground, and then reappeared behind the girls. They were rendered unconscious along with the others when the experiment slammed their heads together. Glancing at the unconscious ninja, Ryujin muttered, how disappointing, I was at least hoping for a decent challenge. Then he carried on dealing with the remaining citizens. Previously, with F and Naruto. Once their lunch was finished, Naruto and Fu resumed their stroll through the town but things quickly became tense when they felt the ground start to tremble and noticed lightning flashes across the village. Is that? Fu questioned anxiously, fearing that the experiments may have already launched another attack. Naruto exclaimed, let's go, realizing that they were the only ones who had fully recovered from the last battle. As they leapt to the roofs to reach the area the experiments were attacking, the Greenettes nodded in agreement. A howl of thunder knocked them back to the ground, and then they rolled quickly away from the way Lycan slashed his claws where they had been. Naruto said, I'm guessing your friends helped you escape, as he and Fu prepared to battle the experiment that looked like wolves. Naruto and Fu leapt aside as Lycan roared, unleashing another savage howl at the two Jinchuriki. I don't need help to escape and I won't need help in killing you. Water style. Rising water slicer. Exclaimed Fu as he descended through a series of hand signs and hit the ground sending a wave of water hurtling toward Lycan. Wind style. Sword of the wind count. Naruto exclaimed, unleashing a compressed wave of wind towards Lycan with a hand sweep through the air. Lycan let out a second howl at the ground as he saw the two attacks coming at him, sending himself hurtling through the air. He then started swinging his claws at Fu and Naruto, unleashing several crescent shaped chakra blades in their direction causing Fu and Naruto to have to start moving in order to dodge the blades. Shadow Clutch Jutsu. Even so, when Fu and Naruto felt as though they were being grabbed and then slammed into the ground, their eyes widened. They both jumped to their feet without expecting anything, and to their surprise, they saw an extended shadow that connected to their own. The two grunted as they were flung flying back into a wall before realizing the shadow belonged to Merc. Lycan, not letting anyone get in the way of his dealings with the Uzumaki himself, exclaimed, Merc, so Ryujin sent you to deal with the ninja. Find your own targets, they're mine. Merc said, you misunderstand the reason we're here, Mutt. This made Lycan intense, and when Savage emerged behind him and stabbed his claws into the wolf. Like experiments back, Lycan let out a roar. With a crazy smile, Savage exclaimed, we're here to kill you for being a worthless failure, before slamming Lycan's back and sending him flying to the ground. Merc slammed his hands on the ground, turning the area beneath Naruto, Fu, and Lycan into mud, and exclaimed, Earth style. Swamp of the underworld. Lycan was about to howl loudly at Merc and Savage, saying, I'll kill you too for this. You think you'll live long after this betrayal? But Savage jumped on top of him, forcing Lycan's head into the mud. Savage taunted Lycan while jumping on top of him, saying, Ha 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 ha, you stupid mutt, Ryujin. Sama sent us to kill you. 
Why would he waste time on saving a fucking dumbass that loses to a couple brats? Lycan attempted to swipe at Savage, but Savage jumped back onto solid ground. Channeling more chakra into the swamp, Merc said, indeed. Ryujin. Sama doesn't tolerate failure mutt, now you'll see what happens to those that no longer have a use to him. While these humans will be sharing your fate. Thus, the trio began sinking more quickly. Naruto yelled, don't think we'll die that easily assholes. Water style, water trumpet, as he shot a powerful stream of water at the mud through his hands, causing it to loosen and push away to allow them to move. Water style. Tornado of water, exclaimed Fu, making some hand signs as the mud and water started to rise in a big, swirling vortex. As soon as the two ninja managed to escape the mud, they turned to face Lycan, who was shocked to see that he was still trapped. Naruto then grabbed Lycan and started to pull him free. With a series of hand signs, Merc exclaimed, and don't think you'll be able to escape. Earth style. Black pyramid jutsu. Before slamming his hands into the ground and sending several stone spikes shooting up from the earth. Before the greenette assisted Naruto in grabbing Lycan and removing him from the swamp while avoiding the spikes, the sight caused Fu and Naruto to curse in their minds. Then, as Merc's shadow reached out and linked with theirs, immobilizing them, their eyes widened. Before longer shadows encircled them, enclosing the three of them inside a massive shadow in the shape of a pyramid. Shadow absorption jutsu, declared Merc, gesturing with his hands as the pyramid's sides started to spin and the surrounding structures and rubble started to collapse, drawing closer to the pyramid. Savage yelled, now to blow them all into pieces, as he started tossing multiple explosive tags at the pyramid, which also got sucked in. The tags exploded as the pyramid erupted and grew. Within a few moments, all that had been sucked out was released as Merc released the pyramid and clapped his hands together to stop the absorption. Neither experiment detected any of its targets, leaving only ruined remnants and ruins in their wake. Let's return to Ryujin. Sama. Merc said, seeing their target was now dead, before the two jumped off to report back to Ryujin. When the two finally arrived, Ryujin was standing in the middle of numerous unconscious bodies, one of which was the other Konoha ninja. Ryujin frowned a little in irritation at Savage's statement, the mutt is dead Ryujin. Sama. Along with two of the brats that got in the way. Ryujin would have preferred if all of the ninja were still alive to suffer. Ryujin said, a pity. But oh well, the failure is dead and we still have everyone here. Merc, take their shadows, they can suffer in the darkness of their own minds for a few weeks, then we'll move on to the true suffering. Merc nodded and gestured with his hand. Merc exclaimed, Shadow Cutter Jutsu, as a number of tendrils emerged from his own shadow and changed into dozens of pairs of scissors that started chopping away at the ninjas, citizens, and shadows in order to absorb them into himself. Everyone's bodies turned pale and lifeless, and because they had lost their shadows, they were all trapped in comas that would last until Merc, at Ryujin's command, brought their shadows back. Ryujin said, Good, send them away now, he wanted everyone to go back to their base. Shadow capture field jutsu, Merc exclaimed, causing his shadow to spread outward and trap all of the ninja and civilians inside, depositing them in the cells back at base. After everyone was moved, Ryujin, Merc, and Savage left the town and stopped when they were quite a distance away. The three came to a halt and turned back toward the town, Ryujin quickly expelling a significant quantity of chakra and launching it into the sky, causing lightning to leap between dark, whirling storm clouds that are forming overhead. As multiple lightning bolts crashed down on the town, wreaking total havoc, Ryujin exclaimed, lightning style, thunderstorm. With a satisfied nod, the three started heading back to base. After. After a few moments, the lightning strikes came to an end, leaving the town in ruins and full of smoke. Prior to Naruto, Fu, and Lycan emerging from the earth, a heap of rubble started to move and be pushed aside. After mastering earth style, Hiding like a moljutsu, the Uzumaki were able to escape the explosions and debris by making the ground beneath them sound. Staying underground to give the impression that they were dead and then holding out until it was safe to move again. Oh Kami. Fu murmured, gasping in dismay at the devastation all around them. With a curse for this happening and concern for what would happen to the others, Naruto said, damn it. Lycan looked at Fu and Naruto in shock that they would save him after he had attempted to kill them several times. You. You saved me? Why? He exclaimed. Naruto answered, I. Don't know. 
I just acted on instinct and saved you, although he was also aware of how deeply Lycan's betrayal by his allies had affected him. We also couldn't just walk away to die after being betrayed by those two, Fu continued, thinking along the same lines as Naruto about how Lycan was betrayed by his own allies merely for being vanquished and taken prisoner. Lycan expressed his bitterness at being betrayed and left to die, despite his loyalty and never once questioning Ryujin's orders. Tisk. You should have just left me to die. Ryujin's already decided my use has run out, once he finds out I'm alive, he'll just keep trying until I'm dead. Then Naruto said, shocking Lycan and getting Fu to nod in agreement, fuck Ryujin, then. The bastard was willing to kill you just because you were defeated and captured, that just shows he only sees you all as disposable pawns to toss aside once you've served your purpose. And we're supposed to be enemies, yet we still saved you. F, said, scowling at the wolf. Like experiment that had no idea where he would even go, Naruto's right. He probably would have done the same eventually anyway, after no longer having a use for you. Now though, you're free from his control, since they likely think you're dead and you could leave if you wanted. And, if it matters, we both understand what it's like to be rejected, Fu continued, grabbing Lycan's attention as he turned back to face them. Lycan demanded, what could either of you possibly know? We're Jinchuriki, meant to be used as weapons for our villages and if we fail, then we'd simply have our biju extracted and sealed inside someone else, while we're left to die. So yeah, we know the feeling that a single screw up could end with us being dead. Naruto said, surprising Lycan again to hear they were Jinchuriki. Fu said, nodding at Naruto, but right now, we have to go save everyone, if they're still alive, and stop Ryujin before he can hurt anyone else. Knowing Ryujin was much stronger than they thought, given how he was able to keep all the experiments in line, Lycan said, you do that, you'll only be walking to your own deaths. Ryujin is far stronger than you can imagine, all of this, this was just him sending a message. If he gets serious, you'll both die. Not all of them were eager to follow orders, but they also didn't want to die. Naruto vowed to rip Ryujin's limbs off if he did anything to Satsuki and Hinata. Maybe we will. But he attacked people we care about and we're not going to let him get away with that. Fu added, wanting to exact revenge on Merc and Savage as well as payback against the two assholes that tried blowing us up and burying us. Lycan scowled at this and got to his feet, leaving Naruto and Fu unsure of his next move. Lycan, preparing to tear apart Merc and Savage for believing they could kill him, said, if you're so eager to walk to your own deaths, you should at least know where you're going and who you'll be dealing with. And if anyone's going to kill those two, it's going to be me. Naruto and Fu grinned slightly at his offer of assistance. As they left the ruins and started to follow Lycan towards the experiment's base, Fu said, it'd be really great having you with us, and what can you tell us about them? Merc is a rogue Nara, having defected after stealing several kinjutsu from them before being found by Orochimaru. You saw he's skilled in the Nara clan's techniques, he also knows water style and earth style ninjutsu. While savage, he doesn't have any special abilities, but he is a Jishinist, being part of some cult in the land of hot water, along with being immortal. You can stab him, cut his throat, rip his heart out, even cut him into pieces and he'll still be alive. The experiments that were performed also gave him greater regeneration, so he heals faster than you can hurt him. Aside from that, he usually just acts like a living shield, tanking any attacks while getting in close to attack with his hands. Explained Lycan, surprising Naruto and Fu at what they're capable of, but nodded at now knowing what they're capable of, which should hopefully make them easier to deal with. And Ryujin? Inquired Naruto, curious about the abilities of Ryujin. He's skilled in lightning-style ninjutsu, using it to not only attack but enhance his physical abilities, he also has a more advanced curse mark than the rest of us, which gives him even greater power when he activates it. I know he also uses poisons since I can smell them on him, likely in the event he's ever against a superior opponent. But make no mistake, he won't be an easy opponent and will very likely kill us. Lycan said, convinced that if they face Ryujin they would die. At least then he could claim that he made an effort to bring him down too, and that he will see to it that Savage and Merc perish. After exchanging glances, Naruto, Fu, and the other two started running with the goal of destroying the remaining experiments and releasing the others. Dot, base. Before arriving at Kabuto, Ryujin, Merc, and Savage were monitoring the inmates at the experiment's base. Realizing that he was Orochimaru's right, Handman and one of his followers, though it doesn't appear the other Konoha ninja knew this. 
After considering for a moment having Merc wake the ninja and tell them, Ryujin shook his head. Considering that he was not particularly concerned with the spies Orochimaru had in the hidden villages. With the possibility that additional ninja would be sent or that Orochimaru or any of his followers would come to investigate, Ryujin gave the order, both of you, go watch the entrance in the event anyone shows up. With a nod, Merc and Savage headed out to monitor the base entrance and get ready for any visitors, while Ryujin, feeling satisfied with their achievement, went back to his throne room. However, Ryujin scowled upon seeing Kimimaro standing in front of his throne when he entered his throne room. Not surprisingly, Ryujin said, Kimimaro, what a surprise. I take it you're here about Orochimaru's little spy currently locked away. The Kagaya had been released, but Ryujin was still stunned. Kimimaro swung his hands at Ryujin and fired his fingers bones at the experiment, saying, you shouldn't have interfered in Orochimaru. Sama's business, Ryujin. As now your usefulness has run out. 10. Finger drilling bullets. Lightning style. Lightning strike armor. Exclaimed Ryujin as he dove through the finger bones and reappeared behind Kimimaro, all while dousing himself in lightning. When multiple bone spikes protruded from Kimimaro's back, the experimenter had to jump back before he could impale him in the back. Willow dance. Exclaimed Kimimaro slapping his right arm at the experiment as long bone spikes shot out of his elbows and palms. When Kimimaro attempted to impale him, Ryujin swiftly grabbed his second spike after he had leaned back to avoid it. When Kimimaro succeeded in slicing through his hand and armor, all he could do was grit his teeth and widen his eyes in pain. Then, the Kagaya leapt to his feet and slammed his knee into Ryujin's chest. A bone spike shot out of his knee, stabbing Ryujin who was just in time to escape the knife's path to his heart. Then Kimimaro stabbed Ryujin in the shoulders with bone spikes that protruded from his palms. With all of his strength, Kimimaro turned Ryujin over and threw him onto his throne, demolishing it before recharging the experiment. Larch Dance Ryujin hurried to get out of the way and put some distance between them as Kimimaro exclaimed as his bone spikes gradually retreated to shorter lengths and several more emerged from his body. Lightning Burial Banquet of lightning! exclaimed Ryujin, unleashing a barrage of lightning bolts at the Kagaya that caused his eyes to widen in disbelief as Kimimaro dispelled the lightning with a swipe of his arms. Kimimaro closed the gap between them, leaving Ryujin open. He slid across the floor, dropping his knees and swinging his arm at Ryujin's legs, driving the bone spikes into them. Ryujin is then thrown into the air by Kimimaro, who then slams his foot down on his back, sending him flying to the ground. Lightning style. False darkness. Ryujin exclaimed, spinning around to face Kimimaro and launching a lightning bolt in the shape of a spear from his mouth. The Kagaya was unable to avoid it as it struck his chest. As Ryujin stood up and resumed shooting lightning at Kimimaro, concentrating it precisely on the Kagaya, the blast sent Kimimaro hurtling across the room and through a wall. Only to gag as his jutsu was severed when a spinal cord shot out of the hole and wrapped around his throat. When Kimimaro emerged from the hole, he appeared to be in perfect condition save for his torn shirt and the healing skin on his chest, which exposed his skeletal structure. Clematis Dance. Vine. Kimimaro uttered before grabbing Ryujin by the bone whip and dragging him through the air in his direction. Camellia Dance. Exclaimed Kimimaro as he withdrew a bone sword from his arm. When he got close enough, he stabbed Ryujin directly through, causing the experiment to erupt in blood. However, Kimimaro didn't stop there. He then released his whip, kicked Ryujin across the room, and raised his hands. 10. Finger drilling bullets. Kimimaro yelled as he fired his shattered fingers at Ryujin, causing him to crash into the wall as they repeatedly shot through the experiment. As Kimimaro came to finish him off, Ryujin looked up weakly from gagging and coughing up blood. Ryujin asked, Knowing full well that his lightning-style ninjutsu was far more powerful than any ordinary lightning-style ninjutsu, h. Ho. How, how c. Ca. Can you resist my li. Li. Lightning. To be honest, I never trusted you. I only freed you because Orochimaru, Sama asked me to. The fact that you were almost as strong as Jugo made me even more suspicious. In case you ever betrayed Orochimaru, Sama. And since you seem to prefer lightning style ninjutsu, I learned how to transform my chakra into wind chakra and trained myself to cover my bones with it. Combined with my already high defensive powers, your attacks were little more than a small shock for me, 
and I suppose I should thank you, since you've helped me become even stronger in serving Orochimaru. Sama. For that, I'll put an end to your suffering quickly. Kimimaru said, getting tense when Ryujin started laughing and stopped sounding weak. To the surprise of the Kagaya, Ryujin yelled, lightning style bullet, powerful breath, and thrust his fist forward, unleashing a powerful blast of lightning that sent Kimimaru crashing through several walls. Ryujin stood up, still laughing, and shrugged off his robes, kimono, and fur, leaving only his black hakama pants. Before lightning flashed across his body and a shroud of chakra took on a dark purple color. Kimimaro, thank you for the information. However, as you mentioned, I am not as strong as Jugo and haven't demonstrated to you the full extent of my lightning power. Ryujin said, jerking his head and arms and forming scale patches all over his body. His eyes glowed with black sclera and had slit pupils. Ryujin asked, stepping through the hole in the wall as Kimimaro stood up, and haven't you ever wondered just why Orochimaru made me so powerful? Why he let me grow strong enough to be second to Jugo? Pulling his spine out, Kimimaro yelled, no Clematis dance, vine. But Ryujin was able to catch it with a menacing smirk on its face. You really should have, said Ryujin before yanking Kimimaro through the air, slamming his arm into his neck, making Kimimaro gag lightly at the blow before he was sent crashing through more walls. Ryujin's teeth sharpened into fangs, his tongue split, and his body jerked some more as horns started to grow out of his head. Ryujin said, blocking Kimimaro's bone sword when the Kagaya suddenly appeared in front of him in a burst of speed, now looking angry at the insults to his master. You serve Orochimaru like a loyal lapdog, not knowing just how weak he's become. Years of self. Experimentation and stealing bodies for his own desires has been taking its toll on him, resulting in Orochimaru trying to regain his former strength. Before Kimimaro was thrown through the walls and back into the throne room, Ryujin grabbed him by the head and slammed him into the ground. That's what I was meant to be. I wasn't just a stand.in vessel or something Orochimaru would use to control himself. I was meant to help him rise even higher than he once did. Only, I'm no snake. Ryujin spoke slyly as he retreated into the throne room, and then two wings with purple interiors and white membranes suddenly burst out of his back. I am a dragon, exclaimed Ryujin, as lightning and chakra flared around him and Kimimaro narrowed her eyes in response. Kimimaro swung his hands through the air and fired several rounds of finger bullets at Ryujin, saying, then I'll be the one to slay you. 10. Finger Drilling Bullets Ryujin slammed his hands on the ground, forming a wall of lightning that vaporized the finger's bullets, saying, lightning style, lightning wall. Ryujin exclaimed, lightning style, lightning fang, as the lightning wall split into multiple lightning bolts that he hurled at Kimimaro. Larch dance, exclaimed Kimimaro, charging at Ryujin while a few bone spikes appeared all over his body. Feeling the lightning still piercing his body, Kimimaro raised his arms and gritted his teeth, blocking out most of the lightning. Prior to arriving at Ryujin, he extended his arms and proceeded to cut through his body. When the experiments attempted to sever him with their claws, Kimimaro flipped him over, allowing Ryujin to block his attack with his wings. Willow dance! exclaimed Kimimaro, causing the dragon, like experiment to grunt as he thrust a big bone spike into Ryujin's back from his palm. Ryujin exclaimed, lightning style, lightning quake flash, as he released a purplish lightning current from his hands that traveled throughout his body, pushing Kimimaro out of his way before soaring toward the Kagaya. Camellia dance! exclaimed Kimimaro, this time taking two bone swords from his arms and lunging toward Ryujin, who instantly fell to the ground with a smirk on his face. With a violent slam of his hands, Ryujin exclaimed, lightning style! Spider web! A lightning web began to stretch across the ground, and Kimimaro swiftly reacted by leaping into the air. The Kagaya threw one of his swords to the ground, landing on top of it and staying upright until Ryujin attacked him once more. After knocking Kimimaro off his sword, the white-haired adolescent turned around and slammed Ryujin's back with his feet, sending him tumbling to the ground. Ryujin yelled, lightning style, thunderclap arrow, and unleashed a bolt of lightning that struck Kimimaro, who flung his sword at the lightning, setting off an explosion. After skidding across the ground to get his second sword, Kimimaro charged Ryujin once more, who had also activated his lightning strike armor. Letting him elude Kimimaro's blows before closing distance and seizing the Kaguya's wrist, 
then rotating his arm to unleash his blade. Taking hold of the bone sword, Ryujin smirked as it pierced Kimimaro's stomach and impaled the Kagaya. You know that your own strength is also your greatest weakness. Lightning style. Lightning rod, Ryujin exclaimed as he raised his arm into the air and sent a strong electrical bolt through his body and into Kimimaro's. The dragon. Like experiment grunted as the Kagaya gritted his teeth, hardened his skull, and slammed his head into Ryujin's face. As a result, Kimimaro was able to lift his knee and pierce Ryujin's chest with a bone spike that protruded from it. Prior to lunging backward and squinting his eyes at Ryujin, Kimimaro sighed and shrugged off his shirt. He started coughing violently before putting his hand to his mouth. I must stop this right now. With his illness and Ryujin turning out to be stronger than he had expected, Kimimaro realized as he pulled his hand away and noticed patches of blood on it that he couldn't afford for this battle to drag on. As his curse mark glowed and black markings spread across his body, Kimimaro said, I will admit, the power you possess certainly puts you above the usual trash I must deal with and I now see why Orochimaru. Sama gave you such power to regain his own lost strength, however, you still had no hope in a fight against me. Angry at the Kagaya for believing he still had a chance when at his strongest, Ryujin shot back, and why's that? You're using your curse mark, showing you need its power to beat me. You misunderstand, I am fully capable of killing you in my base form, but such a thing would only lead to a longer fight and I don't enjoy wasting my time on such nonsense. This is merely to end the fight now rather than let it continue more than it already has. After all you seem to forget something very important Ryujin, the power you possess was given to you. While I was born powerful, Kimimaro said as he entered the curse mark second stage of battle. Giving him a long, bone, spiked tail, six large bone spines sticking out of his back, dark gray skin, dark black sclera, yellow irises, sharp teeth, and two dark black curved markings under and above each of his eyes. Though much slower in his transformed state, Kimimaro said, now, what was it you called me? A loyal lapdog to Orochimaru. Sama. Then your dog food, before charging Ryujin. Don't give me that crap, maybe if you were in your prime that would have been true, but we both know that isn't the case. Lightning style. False darkness. Ryujin yelled, launching several lightning spears at the Kagaya through his mouth. However, because of his thicker skin now, Kimimaro charged right through them. Clematis dance. Vine! exclaimed Kimimaro as he extended his spine significantly and hurled it toward Ryujin, spiking the vertebrae. Ryujin clenched his teeth and folded his wings to shield himself from the bone whip spikes, which tore into his body and wings. Then, he was pulled through the air and toward Kimimaro. Clematis dance. Flower! exclaimed Kimimaro, throwing a huge bone spear around Ryujin's arm as he rushed his oncoming form. Ryujin thrust the spear forward, letting out a painful groan as it pierced his body and propelled him skyward. 10. Finger drilling bullets. Kimimaro exclaimed as he swung his hands through the air, releasing spiked, tipped fingers that had hardened and shot through Ryujin's body, exacerbating his already excruciating pain. Ryujin growled before Kimimaro plunged his bone spear into the earth and made his way beneath. You think you can escape me? Lightning burial. Banquet of lightning. Ryujin roared, launching several lightning bolts in Kimimaro's direction through the earth. Ryujin's eyes widened as dozens upon dozens of bone spikes shot up from the ground around him, but he quickly flew up to avoid being impaled by the spikes. No, I'm simply ending this now. Bracken dance, yelled Kimimaro. Then, after merging with the bones to appear behind Ryujin, Kimimaro materialized from the bone spikes behind him. With the dragon. Like experiment staring at him with wide eyes and a flicker of fear in them, Kimimaro exclaimed, This ends now and thrust his spear forward to kill Ryujin. Even though Ryujin gritted his teeth to keep from screaming as the bone spear impaled his side, he was able to move enough to prevent it from being a fatal blow. When Ryujin released a cloud of purple smoke directly into Kimimaro's face, the Kagaya began to cough and retreat. Then all of a sudden, a few things were pushed into his mouth, and when he bit down on them, something unexpected spilled into his mouth. When Kimimaro twisted the bone spear in his side and grabbed the Kagaya, he pulled him out of the bone spikes and threw him across the room, shattering through numerous other bone spikes. Ryujin grunted before smirking and saying, yes, it does end now. Lightning style. Depth charge. Ryujin exclaimed, 
dousing himself in lightning chakra before launching an all encompassing lightning strike that annihilated the bone spikes although kimimaro was able to withstand most of the damage by hardening his skeleton he began to lose strength and his vision became foggy poison as expected from trash that knows they would die ryujin smirked wickedly at kimimaro who was panting and feeling his body weakening as his curse mark deactivated then ryujin flew at him clawed hand pulled back to impale the kagaya saying whatever ends in me winning now i wonder will orochimaru mourn your death or care less about losing another tool let's find out when i send him your head gritting his teeth in frustration kimimaro made himself stand and waited for ryujin to get close enough before quickly circling back around to launch his attack camellia dance exclaimed kimimaro as she pulled out two bone swords and stabbed ryujin in the back and the ground pinning the dragon like experiment in place and causing Ryujin to scream in agony. He growled and forced himself off the bone swords, but to his increasing ire, he saw that Kimimaro was nowhere to be found. Knowing that Kimimaro was already dead, Ryujin yelled, Run as far as you like Kimimaro. With your illness and now my poison running through your veins, you'll be dead soon enough. Kimimaro grunted as he went and took a seat on the raised dais that had once been his throne. When Ryujin was left alone, he gasped heavily from the battle and the chakra he had used. He also noticed that his wounds were beginning to heal. However, he was aware that before returning to full strength, he would need some time to rest and heal. In company with Kimimaro, Kimimaro, meanwhile, had made it out of the base and was making his way through the forest, breathing heavily as he could feel the poison coursing through him. The Kagaya started toward a cave before he noticed it. Kimimaro went into the cave and explored it thoroughly before settling down to sleep and closing his eyes. The Kagaya said to Orochimaru, Sama, please forgive me, just before he passed out. However, unlike what he and Ryujin had anticipated, his breathing started to even out during his hibernation. Later, with Lycan, Fu, and Naruto. Soon after, Naruto, Fu, and Lycan had reached the experiment's base entrance. Lycan had sniffed the air before growling. Naruto and Fu nodded, realizing they had no time to linger. Lycan said, I can smell Merc and Savage inside. They're likely waiting for anyone to enter to ambush them. We have to be quick to surprise them and defeat them. We still have to locate the others and eliminate Ryujin, so we can't waste time and energy fighting them, Naruto said, gesturing for them to retreat from the entrance. Naruto took out multiple kanai with explosive tags and threw them towards the base entrances once they were well away from the entrance. As soon as they made contact, the tags exploded, creating a massive hole in the base. Fire style. Fox fire, declared Naruto as he launched ten blue fireballs into the base. Wind style. Divine mountain wind, exclaimed Fu, launching a wind vortex into the base that propelled the fireballs into a massive conflagration that swept across the area, destroying everything in its path. Naruto nodded at Fu and the greenette returned as Lycan let out a sonic howl at the combined attacks, intensifying the flames even more. Water style. Surging sea. Naruto and Fu exclaimed as they made their way through the hand signs, and then a great deal of water was released, putting out the flames and producing a great deal of steam. Let's go! exclaimed Naruto as they dashed through the steaming base. Savage, whose whole body was burnt and healing, was about to strike, but Uzumaki swiftly withdrew his sword and blocked the blow. Savage yelled, You little fuckers should have stayed dead, cause now I'm gonna, before Lycan tackled him and threw him against the wall. The Jashinist was thrown down the corridor where he got up and started to regenerate, but not before Lycan bit down on Savage's neck and tore a large chunk out. The only thing you'll do is scream, roared Lycan. Savage yelled, I'll mount your fucking head on my wall, as he charged towards Lycan who let out a howl that sent Savage hurtling backward. When Naruto and Fu noticed Merc emerging from the ground and casting a shadow in their direction, they became tense and swiftly withdrew from helping Lycan deal with Savage. Shadow sewing Jutsu! Merc exclaimed, causing his shadow to split into numerous thin, needle, like tendrils that shot in the direction of Fu and Naruto. Not this time, exclaimed Naruto taking out a few pellets and tossing them to the ground where they burst into a thick cloud of smoke, keeping Merc's shadows from catching hold of them. Scale powder, exclaimed Fu, letting fly a great deal of fine powder through the smoke. The powder instantly shone brightly, causing Merc to wince and cover his eyes from the intense light. 
Naruto exclaimed, wind style, air bullets, as he made hand signs and fired several compressed air bullets at Merc. Merc exclaimed, earth style, mud wall, as he slammed his hands into the earth, causing a stone wall to rise up in front of him. The air bullets struck the wall and caused it to crack. Water style, rising water slicer, Fu exclaimed, unleashing a torrent of water that tore through the mud wall and rushed in Merc's direction. After the experiment succeeded in regaining his vision, he saw the approaching wave of water, and his eyes widened. Merc grunted as the water wave cut his arm, but he quickly jumped out of the way. The renegade Nara jumped back quickly before screaming out as Naruto charged him, drew his sword, and sliced Merc across his chest. Merc exclaimed, Shadow Neck Binding Jutsu, as his shadow shot out and he was able to grab hold of Naruto's before it started to creep up his body to his neck and choke the Uzumaki. Naruto clenched his teeth in an attempt to fight against Merc's control before the latter had his shadow encircle his arm and start swinging his sword violently to stab himself. Fu exclaimed, Net. Shaped prison, as she shot webbing out of her hands and ensnared Merc before he could escape. The experiment soon sensed that his chakra was being depleted, enabling Naruto to begin escaping his shadow. Naruto raised his sword as the ravenette flared his chakra, successfully releasing himself from Merc's shadow and charging the experiment. Merc's eyes widened in fear. As the renegade Nara quickly sank into the earth to get away, Fu's webs pulled him back. Before Merc could respond, Naruto swung his sword and sliced straight through his neck as his head struck the ground. The two parted ways, relieved that their strategy and surprise attack appeared to have succeeded, and got ready to help Lycan. When dozens of shadows abruptly flew off of Merc's body, Naruto and Fu tensed, wondering if he could avoid being killed, but nothing more happened. What was that? Fu asked, perplexed by the events that had just transpired before they witnessed Savage's mutilated body being thrown at Merc's. Said Lycan, startling the two Jinchuriki and making them both grateful he didn't get a chance to use it on them, that's Merc's shadow cutter jutsu, a kinjutsu used to steal people's shadows, leaving them in comas and trapped in their own minds. The victims only wake up if Merc returns their shadows, I guess killing him also works as well. Naruto said, glancing at Savage's corpse, I thought you said he couldn't be killed. Lycan said, having crushed Savage's head to make sure he couldn't return, he can't, but his body is useless without its head and his head can't be reattached if it's nothing but a stain on the wall. Naruto and Fu nodded in agreement. Naruto said, nodding to the greenette, all right, that just leaves Ryujin. Fu you go find the others, Lycan and I will keep Ryujin busy long enough for you to free everyone and come help take him down. The greenette then fled deeper into the base to discover where everyone was being held. Naruto and Lycan prepared for the challenging and potentially deadly battle by moving in the direction where they sensed Ryujin. However, as they neared the throne room, more and more evidence of a previous conflict appeared, leaving the two perplexed as to who else might have been present, giving them hope that whoever battled Ryujin would weaken him enough for them to defeat him on their own. Before they knew it, they stormed into the throne room, causing Ryujin to jerk backward and widening Naruto's eyes in recognition of his changed appearance. Well, if you two are still alive, it would seem I'm being plagued by insects today, Ryujin remarked, clearly displeased that Lycan and Naruto were still alive, especially given his current condition. Lycan, seeing Ryujin's current state and thinking they might have a chance to kill him, growled, I can't say the same for Merc and Savage, leaving just you. Naruto continued, pointing his sword at Ryujin and making the experiment with the dragon. Like appearance frown as he stood up. And just by looking at you, it looks like someone saved us some trouble. I guess you could make it easier and just let us kill you. Ryujin yelled, even in my current condition, I'm still more than powerful enough to kill the likes of you. Lightning style. Lightning ball. Before launching several lightning balls in the direction of Lycan and Naruto. Wind style. Shield of the wind count. Exclaimed Naruto, navigating hand signs and erecting a wind barrier that the lightning balls struck before launching himself more powerfully and swiftly back at Ryujin. Ryujin swiftly leapt out of the way, grunting as a few lightning balls struck him before Lycan tackled him. Ryujin was thrown into the wall by the wolf. Like experiment, who roared and slammed him into the ground before grabbing him by the wings. Fire style. Ash pile burning. Declared Naruto, unleashing a torrent of gunpowder infused with chakra in Ryujin's direction. He then dragged his sword across the ground, 
scattering sparks that ignited the gunpowder and engulfed Ryujin in a massive explosion of flames. But before Naruto could blink, Ryujin flew out of the fire, his lightning strike armor still on, and appeared in front of him. Naruto leapt through a wall, slamming his foot into the chest of the Uzumaki, smashed him against the ceiling, and grabbed his head, sending him crashing into the ground. Then he turned and snatched Lycan by the throat, growling as Lycan slashed his claws across his face. In response, Ryujin sliced Lycan with his own claws before hitting Lycan in the head with an elbow, sending him flying into the earth. Ryujin snarled and grabbed Lycan by the neck, saying, you are nothing but a worthless failure, mutt. One that I'll enjoy tearing apart. Lycan then quickly raised his head and slammed it into Ryujin's jaw, causing him to grunt. Lycan shot back, says the other failure, and then let out a howl that sent Ryujin flying across the room and slamming into a wall. After overcoming Ryujin's kick, Naruto exclaimed, wind style, sword of the wind count, as he swung his sword at the dragon, like experiment and let out a powerful, compressed wave of wind. Ryujin roared in pain and rage as the attack sliced through his lightning strike armor and wings, folding his wings around him to block it. Before Ryujin disappeared in a flash of light, his wings were gradually growing back. He then reappeared behind Naruto and jabbed his claws into his back, lifting him into the air and making the whiskered ravenette grunt. Ryujin roared, I've had enough of you humans interfering, lightning style bullet, powerful breath, before hurling Naruto up and punching him hard, sending him crashing through the ceiling with a powerful lightning bolt. Moonlight could be seen shining through the enormous hole that the Uzumaki left behind when he crashed through the ceiling and was launched back outside. After Ryujin halted his attack, Naruto crashed into the ground, and the dragon, like experiment flew outside and dive, bombed him. Lycan leapt out of the throne room and unleashed several crescent, shaped blasts of chakra at him, forcing him to move. With a loud roar, Lycan conjured up multiple chakra wolves, all of which lunged towards Ryujin, who let out a furious growl and started scything away at the wolves with his claws. Lycan asked as he helped Naruto stand up, are you alright? The Jinchuriki grunted as he did so, sensing the healing of his wounds. Naruto said, I'll live. Let's just focus on dealing with him. Then, they turned to see Ryujin appeared to be draining the chakra wolves, taking their chakra and accelerating his own healing process. After that, the Uzumaki created dozens of shadow clones, sending the majority of them after Ryujin while three of them stayed behind with Lycan. The dragon. Like experiment, forced to deal with clones now, only became angrier. Ryujin yelled, lightning style, electromagnetic murder, and shot a bolt of lightning out of his hands that killed most of the clones. Fire style. Flame whirlwind. Exclaimed Naruto along with one of his clones, sending spiraling flames in Ryujin's direction. The other two clones exclaimed, wind style, flower scattering dance, as they formed two enormous cyclones of petals and winds. Ryujin was unable to dodge as the attacks collided and burned his body as the jutsu combined to create a massive spiraling vortex of fire. Lycan swung his claws, unleashing dozens of crescent shaped blades at Ryujin before Naruto and his clones directed the vortex upward and let out a loud sonic howl. As the combined attacks burned and slashed Ryujin, he cried out in pain and felt his anger and hatred grow at their belief that they could defeat him. Before long, the dragon like experiment erupted into a loud, enraged roar, his chakra fluttering around him like a tiny lightning storm, scattering the wind and flames, startling Naruto and Lycan. Ryujin yelled, I will put an end to all of your miserable lives, right now, as he started to spin around in the air. Dark thunderclouds were converging above him, encircling Ryujin in a lightning and wind vortex. Ryujin yelled, lightning dragon tornado, as the vortex transformed into a long, serpentine dragon with red eyes. The dragon let out a loud roar and dove directly towards Naruto and Lycan. Lycan attempted to drive the dragon away by letting out a fierce howl and directing all of his chakra into it. Lycan added more chakra to the dragon, which then let out its own roar and pushed through the howl. Naruto started channeling as much chakra as he could into his sword while holding it firmly, enveloping it in a halo of chakra. Before long, the chakra began to condense around the blade and move to its tip. Then, as he swung his sword toward the dragon and let loose a massive wave of chakra shaped like a crescent moon, the whiskered ravenette let out a cry. Lycan's howl blended with the attack, 
and it appeared for a brief moment as though it was being pushed back. The two's eyes widened as the dragon roared once more and charged straight towards them. Lycan was startled when Naruto moved in front of the lightning dragon tornado and raised his sword in an attempt to block it. The attack broke the blade, causing Naruto's eyes to widen, and then it threw both Lycan and him back, exploding in a huge dome of wind and lightning that ruined the surrounding area. Before they saw Ryujin appear, Naruto and Lycan were sent skidding across the ground while moaning in agony. Naruto immediately flew straight at the dragon. Like experiment, pulling back his claws. As Naruto squirmed to his feet to step aside, Ryujin bellowed a menacing, die, but he was immobile as he approached. The Uzumaki was only able to become tense upon realizing that he was probably going to die, when Ryujin and him were abruptly separated by a white blur. Naruto was shocked and horrified to see Ryujin's claws piercing his chest and that Lycan had become involved. Ryujin interrupted, screamed in agony as Lycan slashed his claws deeply across his face and let out a sonic howl that sent Ryujin flying back. Sacrificing yourself for a human? You really are path. Lycan dropped to his knees and turned to face the Uzumaki, and Naruto asked in shock, Why? Why did you save me? Lycan placed one hand on Naruto's shoulder and the other on his chest, saying, Ryujin has proven to be my enemy. You? Naruto felt a sudden surge of energy as Lycan started to transfer the last of his chakra and life force to him. After giving Naruto his last remaining energy, Lycan exclaimed, You have proven to be my friend. Take this, the last of my energy. Take it and destroy him for all wolves. The Jinchuriki gave him a wide, I'd look before grabbing Lycan's body and laying him down on the ground. Angry at Lycan for attacking him, but relieved at killing the failure. Turned. Traitor, Ryujin said, don't be sad, you'll be joining the failure soon enough. As he stood up, Naruto's head snapped in his direction, glaring at the dragon. Like experiment and narrowing his pupils into slits while his eyes flashed red. His nails turned into claws, his canines grew into fangs, and his whiskers darkened and became more noticeable. Black smoke and red chakra started to emerge from his body, and his wounds started to steam and heal. In addition to the Uzumaki appearing to be illuminated by a brighter moonlight. The sight caused Ryujin to scowl before he launched himself straight towards Naruto while retracting his claws. As he was about to impale Naruto with nothing left to stop him, Ryujin yelled, It doesn't matter what tricks you have left, this ends now. But before Ryujin could fall to the ground, Naruto let out a tremendous howl that was so loud that it enveloped the whiskered ravenette in smoke, which later solidified into black armor and clothes. As it ascended Naruto's body to his head, his hair began to turn gray and he developed a wolf. Like face with glowing amber. Or red eyes with slitted pupils and a horn growing out of his forehead. When Ryujin saw Naruto change, it startled him. Then, in a sudden burst of speed, the transformed Jinchuriki disappeared and reappeared above Ryujin his hand encircling his throat. Zen. Aku threw Ryujin into the air and said, you were right. This ends now, and so do you. Zen. Aku yelled, wind style, spiraling wind ball, as he launched several whirlwind, shaped balls at Ryujin. As each ball struck his body, the dragon, like experiment cried out in protest at the strength of the attack. Ryujin exclaimed, lightning style, lightning strike armor, as he quickly vanished and covered himself in lightning. Ryujin attempted to impale the Duke Wolf when he materialized in front of Zen. Aku, but Zen. Aku grabbed his wrist and broke it. Then he drove his own claws into Ryujin's chest, pulled them to his abdomen, and tore them out. Then slamming his foot into Ryujin's stomach and giving him a headbutt. Zen. Aku exclaimed, condensing a great deal of wind chakra into a massive claw that resembled a demonic beast. Beast Wave Gale Pong. Zen. Aku launched the claw at Ryujin, causing him to collide with the ground. Then, he grabbed Ryujin and dragged him back towards the Duke Wolf. He stepped aside to let Ryujin fly past him, but Zen. Aku caught him by the wings. Zen. Aku exclaimed, You won't be needing these anymore, before slamming his foot into Ryujin's back and ripping off his wings as the dragon. Like experiment fell to the ground. Ryujin gritted his teeth at the anguish and pain of losing his wings. Ryujin stood up and gathered all of his chakra, shouting, You! You think! You think you can insult me in such a way? That you could hope to defeat me? I am Ryujin. I am a dragon. I can't be beaten by a half-breed mud like you. 
Ryujin roared, lightning style, false darkness, and hurled a strong lightning bolt directly at Zen, Aku. Fire style. Fox fire, declared Zen, Aku, who used a lot more chakra than normal to counter Ryujin's attack by conjuring up ten blue fireballs and fusing them into a wave of flames. As the two attacks collided, Zen, Aku and Ryujin increased the amount of chakra they were able to incorporate into their jutsu in order to defeat the other. As the two attacks continued to press against one another, Zen, Aku became displeased and let out a loud roar as Ryujin's attack began to push him back, causing Zen, Aku to grunt as he pushed more chakra into his jutsu and felt his feet slip a little on the dirt. This caused his attack to start surpassing the Duke Wolf's own. Zen. Aku created a wind barrier in front of himself and Ryujin's false darkness and foxfire collided with it, saying, let's see how you like a taste of your own lightning, wind style, shield of the wind count. Zen. Aku yelled as he pushed all of his chakra into the barrier, sending the combined jutsu hurtling toward the startled Ryujin with much more force and speed. Ryujin was overpowered by the combined jutsu and was forced to raise his hands in an attempt to block, but he was pushed back because he had no time to flee or avoid the attack. Zen. Aku triumphantly exclaimed, You may have been a dragon, Ryujin, but know that you were nothing before the Duke Wolf, Zen, Aku. Before being destroyed by the attack, Ryujin cried out in terror and anguish, and, No, this can't be happening, no, no, as he was engulfed in a blast of lightning and fire intensified by the wind. Zen. Aku stopped using his jutsu as soon as he lost sense of Ryujin. He then dropped to one knee, gasped, and changed back into Naruto. Upon realizing that there was nothing left of Ryujin, the panting Uzumaki let out a grunt and stood up. He then turned to face Lycan's body with a dejected expression. Before using hand signs, Naruto said, Thank you, Lycan, realizing he couldn't have won without his assistance. Fire style. Running fire. Naruto declared, directing a stream of flames towards Lycan's body to burn it, intending for no one to use it. Though, for a split second, Naruto thought he saw the flames abruptly turn completely white and take on the form of a howling wolf before they swiftly dispersed. Before the Uzumaki's weariness, pain, and exhaustion finally caught up with him, he abruptly passed out and became unconscious. Fortunately being discovered by worried Satsuki and Hinata as they, along with the remaining Konoha ninja and Fu, had just arrived and were shocked by the devastation they were witnessing. Naruto is definitely something different, isn't he senpai? Yamato exclaimed, pleased with his own progress, upon witnessing the devastation brought about by Lycan and Naruto's fight with Ryujin. Kakashi, knowing that Minato and Kashina would be pleased with how strong their son has grown, proudly replied, yes, he definitely is. With his ability to defeat such a formidable foe, Naruto is undoubtedly going to go far, Yugo grinned at her pupil, then frowned slightly upon noticing the broken fragments of his sword. And I'll make sure you get a new blade, Naruto, Yugo said in his head, wishing that Naruto would have a more durable blade that wouldn't break. Kabuto, meanwhile, was fascinated by the devastation and convinced that Naruto had totally destroyed Ryujin because he could find no trace of his body. To think that even though he was weaker after fighting Kimimaro, he was still only a genin and could defeat someone like Ryujin. However, is this a result of Naruto's own strength or did something else alter his appearance? Knowing that both of his masters would be curious to hear about this turn of events, Kabuto thought, in any case, I'll have to make sure both Orochimaru, Sama and Sasori. Sama are informed of this. As Kimimaro opened his eyes, he was overcome with confusion about how he could have survived and realized he was no longer in the cave he had discovered. Instead, he felt himself lying on grass while gazing up at trees that were illuminated by the sun. Is this the hereafter? Kimimaro wondered if she was in the afterlife as she considered this. A familiar voice startled him, saying, you're finally awake. Kimimaro looked up to see Kabuto leaning over him, standing up, and wearing a green chakra around his hands and clipboard under his arm. Kimimaro exclaimed, Kabuto? I'm still alive then? He didn't think he would survive after ingesting Ryujin's poisons and his illness acting up. I'm actually just a shadow clone the original sent to find you. And when I did find you, I assumed you were dead until I noticed you were still breathing. I've been looking after you for three days, running diagnostics. I was beginning to think you may have been in a coma or even been left brain dead after not getting any kind of response from you. 
I'm just surprised as you were to see you waking up, especially this soon. How are you feeling? The clone inquired, and the last Kagaya with an expression of confusion. Surprising and perplexed at how good he actually felt, Kimimaro said, I feel. Fine. Better in fact, better than I've felt in a long time. Did you get rid of the poison? The clone shook his head. Much to Kimimaro's surprise, the clone revealed, I didn't have to. In fact, I didn't have to do anything nor will I need to, as whatever happened, it's cured you Kimimaro. WH. What? exclaimed Kimimaro, feeling both shocked and hopeful that his illness had truly disappeared and that he would once more be able to help Orochimaru. It's true, there's no trace of it or the poison in your body anymore. I originally assumed that your illness came as a result of your unique body structure thanks to your Keke Jenke, which is why I had no way of treating it given I had too little information. But now that I've had more time to study your body while you were unconscious, I found that it came as a result of the moss and mold you had been exposed to as a child, when you had been little more than a prisoner for the rest of your clan. The poison Ryujin used on you had combined with the components of Jugo's Keke Jenke within your curse mark has caused your body to mutate further. Assimilating not only your illness but the poison as well, making it so your blood is quite literally toxic. Though whether this trait is something unique to you or able to be passed down to your descendants as a new Keke Jenke is currently up in the air. The clone explained, with Kimimaro looking at him in stunned silence. Before Kimimaro surprised everyone by taking a bone dagger out of his arm and slicing open his palm, he noticed that his blood had turned purple with a red tint. Observing it spill onto the earth, instantly destroying any grass and plants it came into contact with. The Kagaya initially expressed shock and disbelief before becoming happy at this humorous turn of events. That the two things that ought to have killed him are now at his disposal is a new weapon. Kimimaro collapsed back onto the ground, laughing uncharacteristically at what had transpired. I'm grateful, Ryujin. Even though you were a trash who dared to meddle in Orochimaru. Sama's affairs, your attempt at murder has only strengthened me. I am grateful that you healed me and enhanced my value to Orochimaru. Sama. As he laughed, Kimimaro wondered what Ryujin was thinking and wished he could see the look on his face to realize what he had unknowingly done for him. Even though the Kagaya soon calmed down, he couldn't help but smile with excitement because he knew he would be able to serve Orochimaru for the rest of his life and not have to worry about his illness taking it too soon. And I'm grateful, Jugo. Though Kimimaro knew there was no way he could make up for Jugo's contribution to his recovery, he would still do his best to honor his friend. Your power is truly a blessing, my friend, he thought to himself. The clone continued testing the Kagaya, nodding as it said, while you have every right to be excited Kimimaro, I still need to run some tests to ensure this new power doesn't come with any negative side effects. And you should consider yourself lucky that the poison and your illness were compatible like this, otherwise you would be dead right now. Kimimaro inquired, knowing that if Kabuto was free, then Merc and Savage were also dead if their prisoners were set free. Kabuto, what happened to Ryujin? As if you're here, that means he's dead now, right? Kimimaro asked. Kimimaro was truly shocked when the clone was revealed. Yes, Ryujin is dead, his entire body being completely vaporized in fact. Having fought Lycan and one of the genin Naruto Uzumaki, the latter being the one who killed him. Finding out Ryujin was dead is one thing, but knowing that his whole body was destroyed is quite another, considering that his Dragon Curse Mark's second stage placed him on par with the Kaguya's base during his peak. Or, given his new poisonous blood, at least his pre- Poison Prime. Even more shocking was the fact that a genin had killed him, even in his weaker state from their own fight. What? Exactly happened? Kimimaro asked curious to learn more about the fight's specifics and how strong Naruto Uzumaki was to be able to destroy Ryujin. I don't have all the details, since we only arrived after the battle was over and Naruto is still unconscious. What I do know is that he, Lycan and the Taki Kunoichi, Fu, had killed Merc and Savage with Fu being the one who freed us. Though we'd also been left comatose by Merc's shadow cutter jutsu before waking up when our shadows were returned to us and we could at least feel the power from the end of the battle but I'm sure you'd be able to get a good idea by seeing the destruction left behind. The clone explained, making the Kagaya frown in contemplation. Shortly after the clone completed his tests, Kimimaro got to his feet and accepted some storage scrolls that the clone had given him. This is where I found the blood and DNA samples from the experiments in Naruto, which should still be helpful. However, please make sure Orochimaru, 
Sama knows that the samples from Ryujin and Lycan are limited because their bodies were destroyed. It would be better to see about trying to make duplicates of them using the cloning process, for more viable samples. The clone continued, adding that since Orochimaru had previously created multiple sentient clones of Shinuchiha, it should be simpler to create backups of important DNA samples. I'll make sure Orochimaru. Sama gets the samples and finds out what happened here, Kimimaro answered, putting the scrolls in his pocket before he bolted off. Soon after, the clone dissipates, returning the knowledge it had acquired to the original. In partnership with Naruto. Naruto, meanwhile, was starting to awaken as well. When his eyes opened, he saw the ceiling of a tent. Making him scowl as he peered around and realized he was inside a temporary medical tent, then noticed Kabuto standing to the side. The Grey. Haired Medic. Nins turned to face Naruto when he heard Naruto say, Kabuto. Naruto's eyes widened when Kabuto said, Ah, Naruto. Glad to see you're finally awake, you had everyone worried, and before you ask, you've been unconscious for three days now. However, Naruto felt his arms being held and something heavy resting on top of him when he attempted to sit up. The ravenette lifted his head to see what it was, and his eyes only grew wider as he blushed with shame at what he saw. Fu was lying on top of him, and Satsuki and Hinata were lying down on either side of his futon holding his arms. Why are they in this place? How much time have they spent here? After a moment of shock and embarrassment at seeing his friends and teammates, Naruto turned to face Kabuto in search of clarification. They refused to leave no matter what any of us said, the only time they did was to eat, using the restroom, and helping with the repairs around town. But other than that, they'd always be here the entire time. Though the position they're currently in, that actually only happened last night, Ironic that it just so happens to be the night before you wake up. Kabuto revealed with a smirk on his face, with the Jinshuriki giving him an annoyed glare. It's not funny, Naruto muttered, not wanting to chance waking the girls up by revealing their predicament. Kakashi said, I think it's adorable, all my cute little genin together. Naruto snapped his head in surprise. Naruto exclaimed, when did you get here? Not having heard or felt him approach the tent. Kakashi gave a thumbs up and an eye smile, then took out his book. Just now, but I'm sure you were preoccupied being in bed with three girls. You're really showing the luck of a true harem protagonist Naruto. Well done, he exclaimed. To Naruto's dismay, who was giving the copy ninja a stern look, Kakashi continued, and if you ever need some advice, these are the perfect guide. Naruto shot back, says the guy who's probably never even been on a date before. Kakashi appeared to have been struck by lightning, and he practically teleported to a corner of the tent, crouching there with a dejected air around him. With his arms pinned, Naruto started to carefully move them to create a shadow clone, which he would use in place of the girls. Unfortunately, Satsuki, Hanada, and Fu woke up before Naruto could free his arms to create a clone, which made him tense. As the three awoke, Satsuki and Hanada released Uzumaki's arms and sat up, leaving him helpless. Fu, Meanwhile, sat up and now straddled his lap. Why me? Before the females noticed that he was also awake, Naruto thought helplessly. Naruto. The girls exclaimed as they gave him a strong hug, causing Naruto to blush as their bodies felt even closer to him than before. Hanada looked at Naruto.kun, wondering if he was still hurt from fighting Ryujin. Are you alright, Naruto.kun? How are you feeling after the fight? She asked. Satsuki narrowed her eyes and spoke, upset that he would fight Ryujin with only Lycan, though she still appeared worried and relieved that he was awake. What were you even thinking fighting someone like that with hardly any backup? You're lucky to still be alive, she exclaimed. Fu continued, saddened to see Lycan dead and scared that Naruto might have also died, saying, you should have let me go with you or even wait until everyone was freed. Kakashi and Kabuto, on the other hand, took this as a cue to abandon the genin and go outside the tent. I'm fine Hinata, really, I'm also glad that you three are alright and were here for me. And I was just thinking of making sure Ryujin was kept busy long enough for you all to get free and either help or escape. That's what I cared about, making sure you all were safe. I also wasn't going to let you risk yourself foo, since me and Lycan would have been enough to keep Ryujin distracted while you freed everyone. But I am sorry for worrying you three. Naruto said causing the girls to frown at him. Hanada spoke, and Satsuki and Fu nodded in agreement. At least we're all safe still, but please don't needlessly risk yourself like that again Naruto.kun, 
not when you could have more help. Yeah, I know you and Lycan would have been able to fight Ryujin, but I could have helped as well to lessen the risk. So don't even think we'll let you run off to fight some powerful opponent alone. Fu continued, threatening that she would not allow Naruto to fight someone by himself if they ever crossed paths again on a mission. Hanada and Fu nodded in agreement as Satsuki said, and if you do try doing something that reckless again, we'll hold you down and force you accept our help. That, or tie you up so there's no chance of you running off alone. None of them were willing to let him put themselves in danger needlessly again. Naruto said, well, you're already pinning me down, so you're halfway there. The girl's eyes widened as they realized how near the whiskered ravenette really was. S.S.S.O. Sorry. Hanada stammered, blushing from having been cuddling with Naruto as she and Satsuki hurriedly moved away from him. Satsuki said, blushing, yeah, w. We. We re.re. Really d. d. Didn't me dot me. Mean to do that, as she pressed herself against him. Even so, they could see that Fu was still straddling Naruto's waist, her face flushed and her eyes misted. When Naruto realized what was going on, he soon started blushing as well. Naruto nervously asked, Uh, Fu, could you, please get off, to startle the greenette out of her reverie. Eep. Fu let out a squeak and quickly slipped off Naruto's lap, crawling away. Satsuki and Hinata soon realized what had happened as well. We'll leave you alone now. Satsuki stumbled and then she, Hanada, and Fu bolted from the tent. To their increasing humiliation, the Uchiha and Hayuga were still able to see the tent that was growing inside Naruto's pants. Why me? Fox, stop it! When Naruto heard the Kiyubi laughing at him, he thought, but the Biju laughed even harder. As it kept laughing and enjoyed seeing its host's embarrassment, Kiyubi exclaimed, Why? Your embarrassment gives me joy and entertainment. With a sigh of frustration and humiliation, Naruto dragged his hand down his face and made a mental vow to repay the Kiyubi as soon as he figured out how to take a few of its pegs out. After, Naruto emerged from the medical tent after gathering his composure and dressing, to discover dozens of other tents erected outside the demolished town. The sight of the ruins made the whiskered ravenette frown, but she was relieved to see that it is gradually being rebuilt. None of the genin could look at each other before he sat down to breakfast with the girls, memories of what had happened earlier still raw, but ultimately ended up giving each other a fleeting glance before turning away. Glaring at Kakashi, Yamato, and Kabuto, all of whom were grinning with amusement, Naruto thought, I'm going to make them suffer. Wondering what happened after he lost consciousness, Naruto said, so, what happened while I was unconscious? We searched the experiment's hideout for anything useful before moving everyone out and back to the town where we set up a camp before everyone got to work on clearing away the debris and ruins, along with repairing the few buildings that were still standing and in decent condition. Ibiki replied, and Naruto nodded in agreement. Satsuki narrowed his eyes at Yamato and said, we've done what we can to help as well. Yamato. Sensei has been a big help, since he apparently has the Mokotan. They had witnessed how he restrained Ryujin during his attack, causing Naruto's head to snap towards him. Yamato sighed inwardly as Naruto asked, his eyes narrowed and suspicious, you have Mokotan? Yamato responded, knowing they couldn't keep his Mokotan secret after being forced to use it against Ryujin, but they could at least make it seem like his ability with it wasn't on the level of restraining Jinchuriki. Yes I do, it's not exactly something I like to telegraph given how bad it'd be if word got out to enemy nations and villages that Konoha had actually succeeded in recreating the Mokotan but I'm nowhere near the Shodem's level and it's very tasking on my chakra reserves, so I only use it as a last resort," Yamato replied. Naruto said indifferently, right, not liking that both of his teachers had the two Keke Jenke that could restrain or control the Kiyubi and thus him. Yugo abruptly returned the conversation to the subject at hand, saying, anyway, what happened against Ryujin, Naruto? Fu only told us the fight you had against the remaining two experiments and we can only guess what happened against Ryujin with the destruction. After sending Fu to free everyone, Lycan and I went to face Ryujin and hold him off long enough until you all arrived to help. But when we arrived, it looked like someone had already fought Ryujin, leaving him in a weakened state, though he was still powerful enough to take us both on. Then, Ryujin used a powerful attack that blew us both away and destroyed my sword, he would have killed me, but, but Lycan took the hit and was killed. Though not before he transferred the last of his chakra to me, 
giving me the boost I needed to beat Ryujin, but it also left me drained afterwards. Naruto explained, making the others frown while Fu grabbed Naruto's hand while Satsuki and Hinata put their hands on his shoulders. Kakashi inquired, did anything else happen? Anything that made you feel different? Speculating as to whether Naruto had used the Kyuubi's chakra during the battle. With a quick glance at Satsuki and Hinata, both girls realized Naruto was referring to the mask rather than the Kyuubi. There was something after Lycan was killed and he transferred the rest of his chakra to me, though I don't know what it was. But it was really dark and animalistic, it felt like I just became a different person for a moment, the boy replied. While Kakashi and Yamato were also aware of the mask, the others misunderstood his statement and thought he was talking about using the Kyuubi's chakra. With a quick glance, the two Jonin became even more intrigued about the nature of the mask and the potential power it bestowed upon Naruto. This situation involves more than one thing. The way he phrased it, he's talking about something different than Kyuubi. However, what? Knowing he's missing a significant piece of the puzzle behind Naruto's newfound power, Kabuto frowned inwardly. After, after breakfast, the ninja got to work fixing the village, with Fu and Naruto lending a hand a lot with their shadow clones. This also provided Naruto with the chance to approach Taki Kunoichi and tell her about the wolf mask. Sensing that she was just as much a member of the rescue team as Lycan and him, and that she had a right to know, in addition to being his friend. With a slight blush, Fu asked, WH. What D dot did you need Naruto? She was still recalling what had happened when he woke up and how she ultimately felt. Naruto answered, confusing the greenette, it's something I wanted you to know f about my fight with Ryujin and the power I used to beat him. What power did you use? I already know about the Kiyubi, Fu asked, perplexed as to why he felt the need to inform her of something she was already aware of. Before telling Fu about finding the wolf mask and donning it to cause it to merge with him, altering his appearance, and grant him power, Naruto explained, no, it's not the Kiyubi, while I did use some of its chakra, it was a different power I used. What I got during the incident where I stole the forbidden scroll I told you about, I found something later that night. While Fu was shocked to learn what had happened, she was also relieved that Naruto had enough faith in her to tell her such a thing. Naruto said, as of right now, only you, Satsuki, Hanada, and the Sandame's granddaughter, Kanoka, know about the mask and what it did. Taki Kunoichi grinned and gave him a hug. Fu pulled back, looked thoughtfully, and nodded. Thank you for telling me Naruto and for trusting me with this information, it really means a lot. Fu continued, and Shomei says thanks for the trust as well. This made the Uzumaki look at her bewildered. Shomei? Wait, is that the Nanabi? Was the surprised question posed by Naruto, to which Fu nodded. F surprised Naruto by revealing the truth, then wincing as the Kiyubi roared in rage. Yeah, though it prefers to be called Lucky 7 Shomei. We actually get along pretty good, Shomei doesn't even mind letting me use its chakra, I can even summon its wings to fly. And after everything you've done for me, it's fine letting me tell you its name. Kiyubi yelled, defying its siblings to reveal its name. Tell that bug if it even thinks of revealing my name, I will tear its wings off. Fu worriedly asked, are you alright, Naruto? As Naruto put his hand to his head. The greenette nodded in understanding as Naruto said, I'm fine just the Kiyubi getting angry, it also really doesn't want its own name revealed. Fu spoke, aware that she was fortunate to have Chomei sealed inside her, one of the friendlier and more laid. Back Biju, saying, yeah, Chomei says their names are important to each of the Biju and they don't reveal them freely, only to those they trust, which is really rare. The bearded Ravenette now has a contemplative expression on his face as the two quickly return to aiding in the reconstruction of the town. With Yamato and Kakashi, Kakashi and Yamato conversed with the town chief in the meantime. With a frown hiding behind his mask, Kakashi said, I'm afraid we won't be able to stay to finish repairing the village. With Naruto now awake, we'll be returning to Konoha tomorrow to report to the Hokage since our mission is technically complete. Yamato nodded in agreement. To which Yamato replied, Agreed, the Hokage will want to know immediately what's happened here. But you have our apologies for failing in protecting the village, for what it's worth. However, the leader dismissed Yamato's words. You have nothing to apologize for, especially since you still completed your mission in dealing with those experiments and protecting everyone. The only thing that was destroyed here was a bunch of wood, stone, and metal. A village isn't the buildings or the location, it's the people that live in it, 
As long as the people survive so does the village. The leader said, and Kakashi and Yamato nodded. Kakashi said, nodding at the leader, wise words, and I'm sure you'll be able to rebuild in time. The leader said, we will, and I'll be sure to have your payment ready when you leave tomorrow. And they parted ways to carry on with the reconstruction. Time. Skip. One day. The following day. The Konoha ninja and Fu parted ways after receiving their payment from their client and departing the town. Fu said goodbye to Hinata, Satsuki, and Naruto before heading back to Taki. Excited to see her friends again and meet the other people Naruto cares about, Fu thought, I hope Shibuki will be willing to let me take the Chunin exams in Konoha. The Greenette quickly arrived at the waterfall that served as Takigakir's covert entrance, leaping through it to enter the secret cave that was hidden behind it. Then Fu dove into the pool of water and started swimming through the tunnels, emerging at last in the village's center lake. Home, sweet home, Fu thought to herself, her spirits already sinking at being back in the village. However, as soon as she emerged from the lake, the Kunoichi stood watch, realizing that the villagers were not staring at her with enmity and terror as they usually did. Instead, they were all grinning and smirking viciously, and some of them were even laughing aloud. Not liking how everyone was staring at Fu, Shomei warned, I don't like this f, something must have happened if they're acting like this. Be on guard and prepared to make a run for it. She wanted her to be ready to flee if something was going on. Fu nodded mentally in response, not wanting to reveal anything, and then all of a sudden there was an Anbu in front of her. The Anbu asked, not seeing the other ninja sent with her arrive, where is the rest of your team? Dead. The mission proved more difficult than we anticipated and our means of contacting the village was destroyed but the mission was able to be completed, I'll make sure to go speak with Shibuki. Sama to give a full report. Fu responded, only growing more cautious when the villagers she spoke to appeared to find her remarks humorous and began laughing. The Anbu revealed that Shibuki was dead, much to Fu's shock and horror. I'm afraid that will be impossible. Taki had been attacked by Suen and a group of other missing. Nin, Shibuki. Sama fought them off to the best of his abilities, only to unfortunately die facing them. The Anbu motioned for the Fu to follow them, saying, Now come, the council requires your presence. The Jinchuriki's suspicions increased upon hearing this. They didn't have to travel far to reach the village head's residence, it was merely a modestly sized wooden structure with the kanji for, waterfall, above the doorway. A group of people appeared to be waiting for them outside. One of the council members said, Finally, you've returned, as they all looked down at Fu, who was watching them warily. I never realized Taki had a council. Shibuki. Sama never brought it up, Fu remarked, assuming Takigakure was too small a village to require a council to assist the headman in running the show. Another council member remarked, making the Greenette clench her fists slightly behind her back, of course you wouldn't know nor would Shibuki mention us. It was only after the passing of his father that the Taki council was formed, due to his confidence being shattered with how his father died. We gathered together in order to ensure Taki survived through Shibuki's cowardice. Fu said, meaning he was turned into a figurehead, while none of them refuted the claim. She was upset that they had used her friend as a figurehead and saddened that he was dead and that no one seemed to even care. Reluctantly, Fu followed them as they ascended to the building and went inside. If you wish to see it as such a way, then yes, Shibuki was merely a figurehead, ensuring the village still had the image of a strong and capable leader. Now enough there is much else to be discussed with our new ally," remarked a council member. As soon as they stepped inside, Fu was shocked and horrified to see the snake Sani, Orochimaru, sitting on the raised dais where Shibuki and his father had once sat. Orochimaru grinned and said, Hello Fu, I've heard so much about you. The council members were seated in two rows on the floor in front of the dais. Fu exclaimed, not thinking they would be willing to side with Orochimaru especially after she had just dealt with his experiments. W.H. What is this? Why is he here? She exclaimed. A council member, glaring at Fu, said, Watch your tongue, girl. Takigakure has allied with Orochimaru and Sanagakure in order to invade Konohagakure during the upcoming Chunin exams. Another member stated, He has offered us the means to ensure that Taki shall rise higher than ever before, allowing us to stand as Konoha's replacement in the five great nations. The opportunity to grow to a level that rivals the great nations pleased the entire council. We in turn have provided Orochimaru with the information that a team of Kunoichi we had sent to spy to on Konoha, years ago, had acquired.
according to another council member. A council member threatened her, and they all narrowed their eyes, some even seeming to hope she would refuse. That simply leaves you, girl. You can either comply and assist in the invasion or you will be forced to do as we command, before being discarded and replaced with a more submissive Jinchuriki once the invasion is over. Fu was in shock at what was happening and realized that she had no chance of escaping because of Orochimaru's presence. It's impossible to know if any of his supporters were waiting to apprehend her in the village, even in the unlikely event that she was able to fool him and escape. In addition, this alliance by itself convinced her that there had to have been more than just a chance mishap in Shibuki's death. Considering that Orochimaru has already arrived, it appears as though everything was prearranged before Shibuki was even slain. I really don't have an option, Fu pondered, then braced herself and bowed to Orochimaru and the council. Much to the council's delight at the Jinchuriki knowing her place, Fu declared, I am a loyal Kunoichi of Takigakure and will do anything the honorable council asks of me. None of them realized that the Greenette was just following along to learn as much as she could about the invasion. And Fu fully intended to defect the first chance she got, once she had everything she needed. She no longer has any reason to stay in the village, having lost the only tie she had with Taki. Furthermore, Fu vowed to protect her new friends from harm. After traveling back to Konoha for two days, the Konoha ninja made their way directly to the Hokage's tower to report what had transpired with the Sandane. Orochimaru's involvement with Hiruzen was significant, particularly given the potency of these experiments, even though they were deemed unsuccessful. Which only made the Hokage more concerned, as if someone with Ryujin's level of power was viewed as a failure, and who was to say that his former pupil didn't have even more potent experiments and supporters under his tutelage? Something that made him feel even more guilty and hated himself for not being able to murder Orochimaru when he had the chance. The ninja nodded before he withdrew a storage scroll. Well, I am pleased that you all were successful in completing the mission and eliminating Ryujin before he could become an even greater threat, Serutobi said. Giving the scroll to Kabuto, who accepted it with a smile and a bow before opening it to reveal a flak jacket, Serutobi said, and Genin Kabuto Yakushi, you showed great skill and understanding in the information you gathered from the deceased experiments, as well as being able to remain calm under pressure during the attack. I believe you've more than qualified to advance to the rank of Chunin. Hokage. Sama, I'm just happy that I was able to do my share. I'll try my hardest to show that I deserve this new rank, Kabuto answered, aware that the position will bring him a number of benefits and new opportunities for information gathering. Hiruzen made the ninja bow before they left the office, happy to be back in the village. I'm sure you will. Now all of you are dismissed for the time being to rest and get settled back into the village. As soon as they exited the tower, Yugo and Ibiki took off, and Kakashi and Yamato turned to face their students. Kakashi nodded and Yamato said, I'd say after that mission, you've earned a break from training. You're welcome to take the next couple of days off to either relax or train on your own. As Yamato said, agreed. We'll inform you once we're back to our usual training and taking missions. Hopefully ones that will involve less danger and life. Threatening situations. The other members of Team 7 just stared at him indifferently. Naruto said, if you just jinxed us by saying that, you'll be the human shield. Kakashi and the female genin both nodded in agreement, giving the Mokuton user cause for concern that they might be taking them seriously. R. Right. My. Bad. Yamato hesitantly said, and then he and Kakashi also departed, leaving the new Chunin and the Genin alone. Satsuki and Hanada turned to Kabuto as he said, Well, since you three have some time off now, if you're still open for the chance to learn medical ninjutsu, I can take you to the hospital now so you can get started. Hanada grinned and said, Yeah, that'd be really great. Satsuki agreed. Hanada was excited to learn medical ninjutsu. Kabuto looked at the Uzumaki, who gave it some thought and said, Great, and what about you, Naruto? Have you thought about joining? Satsuki and Hinata were learning medical ninjutsu, so Naruto reasoned that it would be beneficial to learn about medicines and poisons to make and identify them. He said, I did and I don't think I'll be able to learn medical ninjutsu in the near future. But I will take the chance to learn about medicines and poisons, whenever you're available to teach me about them. Kabuto turned back to the Uchiha and Hayuga, who nodded in agreement, of course, when you're ready just stop by the hospital to get started or I'll come find you. And if you two are ready, we can go to the hospital now. As they followed Kabuto to the hospital, Satsuki and Hinata waved to the whiskered ravenette, saying, we're ready. See you later, Naruto. 
After giving the wave back, Naruto watched them go until they were completely hidden before leaving to finish up some training. Later, with Hinata and Satsuki. Satsuki and Hinata had gone through orientation on the responsibilities of medic. Ninin received instruction in the fundamentals of medical ninjutsu upon their arrival at the hospital. Hinata is able to identify issues and injuries more accurately because of her chakra control and by Akugan. The Uchiha was informed that before beginning medical ninjutsu, she needed to focus more on her chakra control. After their orientation, Hinata said, that was a pretty good first day, hopefully we'll be able to start using what we learn on missions soon enough, and they walked out of the hospital. With a hint of annoyance that the blue net could get started right away while she still needed to work on her chakra control, Satsuki said, you'll be able to start learning medical ninjutsu and using it on missions soon enough, while I still need to work on my chakra control. Satsuki nodded as Hanada assured her, I'm sure you'll start learning it soon as well. After all, your chakra control is already pretty good, so it shouldn't take too long for you to get to a good enough level. Satsuki's chakra control had improved since their training together. Soon after leaving the hospital, though, Hanada halted when she noticed Kuranai walking ahead of them, causing the Hayuga to smile at the sight of her caregiver and big sister. Kuranai! Hanada exclaimed, grabbing the Jonin's attention. The Jonin turned to see who it was, then grinned upon seeing Hanada. Kuranai approached the two genin and said, Hanada, I heard that you were out on a mission, but I'm glad to see you back and that you're safe. Then he turned to face Satsuki. Kuranai extended her hand and said, and you're Satsuki, it's nice to officially meet you. Satsuki nodded and shook the woman's hand. Recalling the time Kuranai visited the academy to pick up her students, Satsuki said, you too, you're also the Jonin sensei for team 8 with Shino, Sakura, and Kiba. Kuranai. Happy with how her students have been improving, said, that's right. They've been very well so far, we've even completed our own C-rank mission a few days ago. Though right now, Shino and Kiba are training with their clans and Sakura's training with some genjutsu I've been teaching her. Sakura had demonstrated that she truly did have a talent for genjutsu. In addition, the Jonin, aware that having a medic on the team would be beneficial, has been considering using her chakra control to work at the hospital and learn medical ninjutsu. You know Genjutsu? Satsuki inquired, Pete despite being aware that there weren't many experts in Konoha due to the art's need for exact chakra control and its lack of popularity among ninja. Considering that most ninja favored physical harm inflicted by ninjutsu over mental harm or close quarters fighting in taijutsu. Kuranai answered with a hint of pride in her Genjutsu proficiency and recognition as Konoha's top practitioner, Yep, I'm actually considered a prodigy at it. That's pretty cool. Do you know anyone else in Konoha that uses Genjutsu? Satsuki inquired, not wanting to take Kuranai away from her own students in order to train her, but also because having a partner would help her learn more Genjutsu. The Genjutsu mistress winced at her question, but the ravenette scowled and shook her head. Kuranai, unable to resist thinking of her first student, who possessed unparalleled skill and talent in illusions, said, N.no, I don't know anyone else in the village that focuses on Genjutsu. Hanada asked, hoping to catch up with Kuranai, Kuranai, do you think we'd be able to spend some time together? Since it's been a while since we've seen each other. Kuranai nodded and grinned at the blue net. Kuranai, thrilled at the opportunity to spend time with Hanada, said, I'd love to Hanada, I'm sure you have a lot to talk about. The blue net grinned broadly before turning to face Satsuki. Hanada said, I'll see you later, Satsuki, okay. The Uchiha nodded in agreement. Satsuki waved at her teammate and said, yeah, see you Hinata and take as much time as you need. She was heading out to finish up some of her own training. Wanting to visit her clan library and discover what jutsu she could find, Satsuki thought, I should really visit the Uchiha clan library and try to unlock my Sharingan. In addition to trying to unlock her Sharingan, this mission had made her aware of the dangerous and varied enemies they would encounter. Not to mention how fast a straightforward mission could turn into something extremely risky and potentially fatal. Additionally, Satsuki wanted to make sure she was ready for any danger that might arise inside the village or the next time they were outside. Kuranai asked Hinata, So, tell me about this mission you all went on? As they started to stroll through the village, and the blue net started to explain the mission her team had been on. After. After a while, Hanada and Kuranai reached a bakery they had visited previously when the former was under the woman's care, because they had cinnamon rolls that she enjoyed. Hanada receives a big plate of cinnamon rolls, 
which Kuranai finds amusing to watch her gobble them up. However, when Hanada informed the Janin about her team's mission and the danger they were facing, she was equally astounded and alarmed. Even more so upon discovering that their leader was on an entirely different level and that they had gone against Orochimaru's botched experiments. The realization that Naruto was the one who killed him, however, truly took Kuranai by surprise. I thought he was the dead last because I had seen his academy record. Kuranai, the two of them now sitting in the park, said, that's certainly a lot to take in, but I'm glad you all made it back safely and that you even made a new friend. Hanada nodded in agreement. It really wasn't what I expected for our first mission, outside of the village to be light. Though I'm also thankful for it, not just because we got to meet Fu, but it also showed us the kind of threats we'd have to deal with. That we'll need to be prepared to face them, since there's always the chance of encountering stronger and more dangerous enemies. Hanada responded, causing Kuranai to nod in. Indeed, it's something all ninja have to learn eventually, and while I would have liked if you learned it later on. I'm also glad that you now know how dangerous this life can be and to be prepared for it," Kuranai said while grinning at Hinata. After hearing what had happened, Kuranai said, and I'm happy to see how much you've improved, not only in growing stronger but more confident and brave. I'm proud of you for standing up for yourself. Kuranai was relieved that Hinata had been able to leave such a toxic household. I suppose I should give thanks to Hiyashi as well, even though he was prepared to discard his own daughter. Ever since he gave Hinata a free pass from the Hyuga clan, even though it was an accident, Kuranai felt compelled to strike Hiyashi after learning that he had expelled Hinata from the group. However, the Genjutsu mistress was relieved that Hinata had departed voluntarily and that she could now make her own decisions without concern for what the other members of the Hyuga clan would think. After leaving the Hyuga clan, Hinata said, Thank you. It did hurt at first, that he'd go that far just to force me to be on a different team, but now, now I'm happy to be away and Satsuki doesn't mind letting me stay with her for as long as I need. Hanada had never felt more at ease, relaxed, or confident in herself. Kuranai, aware of the blue net's strong dislike and desire to abolish the caged bird seal, inquired with concern, it must feel good. Though what about your desire to get rid of the caged bird seal? Don't you still want to do that? Hanada scowled at this because, as the head of the Hyuga clan, it had always been her goal to do away with the caged bird seal. However, even after losing to Hanabi and her position as the Hyuga clan heiress, she was still hopeful that Hanabi could help her realize her dream. Now that she isn't a member of the Hyuga clan, it would be impossible to do that. Hanada surprised the Janin by revealing, you know, the week before team assignments, I spent it with Naruto.kun, Satsuki, and occasionally Kanoka, the Sandame's granddaughter, whenever she was free. Kuranai asked, Assuming Hanada had trained and prepared herself for the team assignments during the week, really? As Kuranai learned that she had spent it with Naruto and Satsuki, he began to understand why the Hokage thought they would make a good team, had he been observing them and had heard about them from his granddaughter. Yes. It started out with us just training together, before we began spending time together outside of training, hanging out, talking and just being together. It was the happiest I had been in years, without having any pressure put on me pushed to do better, or being looked down upon for not being cold and ruthless like the rest of the clan. Naruto.kun and Satsuki even encouraged my kind nature and believed I could be strong, as well as helping me with my training. Naruto.kun even let me use his shadow clones as targets to help me get used to fighting people. They also helped me get started on learning elemental ninjutsu, which I'm working on combining with my juken. Hanada replied, much to Kuranai's amazement and pride at learning everything she's been doing. But not just that, during that time, it helped me see just how, unhealthy my relationship with the Hyuga clan actually was. Even the branch family didn't like me for being part of the main family and my supposed, weakness. And while I may feel guilty about it, if I had to choose between my friends or the clan that mentally and emotionally abused me for not meeting the standard they wanted from me, I would choose Naruto.kun and Satsuki every time. Even if I didn't like Naruto.kun as more than a friend, I would still choose them, as they believed in me and encouraged me. Since if it was before I spent time with them, I would have given in to Hiyashi's demands, regardless of Naruto.kun being a factor. Hanada said, with the Genjutsu mistress wrapping an arm around her. Well I'm proud of you for standing up for yourself and happy that you found such amazing friends. And while it may look selfish, choosing them over family, sometime it's good being a little selfish and choosing what you want rather than what others want, said Kuranai causing Hanada to smile and
Kuranai was also contemplating what Hanada had just said, especially everything she had said about Naruto. What he had done for her during their time together and on the mission. I still find it hard to believe that someone as strong as this Ryujin was described could be defeated by the dead last of the academy. And that in just one week, he was able to assist Hinata in reaching her current level of strength and confidence, enough for her to confront Hiyashi. Considering his academy award, demeanor, and outfit, they had just passed him off as a young boy posing as a ninja. Kuranai was honestly shocked to learn how much he had changed and matured in such a short period of time. Curious to learn more about the Uzumaki, Kuranai thought, I guess there's a lot more to him than I originally believed. Before, as she considered another child she might have misjudged and passed off, she also experienced a familiar guilt rising inside of her. She is now questioning whether she ought to have given it more effort or offered more assistance to her rather than crushing her dream and stifling her authority. Kuranai sighed and looked at Hinata, saying, I guess that's two kids I didn't give enough credit to. Kuranai quickly shook her head and smiled as Hinata asked, noticing her dejected expression. Is something wrong, Kuranai? She asked. Kuranai was sincere when she said, No, just thinking it'd be interesting to meet Naruto, myself. Given everything he's done, it'd be nice getting the chance to thank him. She also asked if there was still a chance for her to atone for a previous error. In company with Satsuki. Satsuki was collecting elemental and non- elemental ninjutsu scrolls in the Uchiha clan library in the meantime. In addition, two scrolls for the Itoryu and Naitoryu styles of Kenjutsu have been discovered. Once he gets a new sword, I'm sure Naruto would like to learn this Itoryu. Satsuki intended to give Naruto the Itori scroll and keep the Natori scrolls for herself in order to have a style for her twin swords. With it and the Natori also being perfect with my own blades, as well, she thought. Because she didn't really know how to use them and didn't want to make a costly mistake, the Uchiha refrained from using them during the mission. Given the enemies they were up against, she probably wouldn't have been able to hit one of the experiments if she hadn't combined them as a bow and hadn't used her Sharingan to follow their movements. But now that she has learned Itoryu, she can use it when she only uses one of her twin blades, and Naitoryu when she uses both of them. Satsuki also took hold of some Kyujutsu scrolls in order to practice her use of the blade's bow form more effectively. After obtaining all the desired scrolls, Satsuki set out to begin her training, but she was forced to halt when she noticed some scrolls that had been hidden from the others. Satsuki approached the scrolls out of curiosity, and as she saw what some of them were, her eyes widened. Crown clone, clone great explosion, after image clone, Uchiha style, dance of the sun halo, fire style, burning circle, ephemeral. Satsuki was taken aback as she realized that Itachi and Shisui had used and created all of the jutsu. She couldn't complain though, since she also grabbed them despite not expecting to find them here. Satsuki, however, was hesitant to accept Itachi's instruction because he did not want to learn the same jutsu. She was unable to ignore the fact that he is an extremely skilled fighter and has probably picked up more potent jutsu since the massacre, though. This way, at least, she'd know exactly what to expect and have her own surprises in store for him. In partnership with Naruto. Grunting, Naruto stood in an empty training ground and channeled chakra into his hands, swinging them, but to no avail. The Uzumaki kept saying this, growing increasingly irritated when chakra blades started to emerge. Naruto thought to himself, Okay, maybe try the chakra wolves. Then he flailed his chakra around him, attempting to shape it into the shape of wolves. To honor the wolf. Like experiment, the whiskered ravenette has been practicing the techniques he witnessed like in use. He has attempted to create a sonic howl and chakra blades, but each time he has failed and felt that he would not be able to create chakra wolves. Perhaps if I changed into Zen. Aku, Naruto thought to himself still thinking that he might have to change into something else in order to use these jutsu, then he closed his eyes and focused. Naruto flared his chakra once more and started to visualize his transformation, thinking back to his previous transformation and the emotions he was experiencing at the time. Gritting his teeth, he watched himself transform back into Zen. Aku and felt it within. He opened his eyes and let out a small pant before realizing that he had not changed at all, not even slightly. Naruto sighed and turned to go sit down for a break, thinking to himself, guess I can't transform into Zen. Aku it will, just yet. However, he was interrupted when Yugo appeared in a swirl of leaves. Yugo smiled at her student and said, Naruto, I'm glad I caught you. Naruto smiled back, 
but didn't understand why she was here. Naruto approached Yugo. Sensei and asked, shaking her head, did you need something, Yugo? Sensei? Yugo surprised the Jinchuriki by revealing, no, I just wanted to let you know I spoke with the Hokage and he's given me permission to take you to Takumi village to get you a new, customized sword. Naruto asked, Takumi village? Since he had never heard of the location. Yep, it's a village located in the land of rivers and is known for its skill in making weaponry that's really unique and possess powerful abilities. The craftsmen have been selling weapons to all the ninja villages, though as time passed their clientele began getting better at making weapons, causing their own weaponry to become obsolete. As for why we're going all the way to Takumi village, well, given how most of the village sees you, some of the shops here may, Yugo said uneasily, trying to think of the most polite way to word it. Naruto said, either refuse to make me a sword or potentially sabotage it, out of spite. Yugo winced but was unable to refute him. Yeah, they might do that. Although the craftsmen in Takumi village would be too proud to voluntarily sabotage anything they make, they also don't really take kindly to those from hidden villages, especially the five great nations. Given the reduced clientele and the fact that every time there's a war, at least one of the hidden villages has attacked them, fearing that they will sell weapons to an enemy nation or village. And even though they're now neutral, it would be best to remain on guard while we're there, just in case. Yugo said, Aware that the craftsmen in Takumi village had grown resentful over previous attacks and the subsequent lack of buyers for their weapons. I comprehend, and I'll be prepared when we go there, Naruto answered, getting the woman to nod before she departed. The only thing the whiskered ravenette can hope for is that this trip will be uneventful. That's it for today, I hope you guys enjoyed this great story, see you in the next one.